Uh, I guess we're live. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the a, a regular scheduled meeting of the Montclair Historic Preservation Commission, August 22nd, 2019. Uh, notice of this meeting has been posted within the town hall, this building, and also notice has been uh, given to um, the Star Ledger and the Montclair Times. Uh, we are being live streamed tonight on uh, Channel 34. And there's also the opportunity to go back into the township website if you want to look up um, and see what actually transpired during this meeting and actually during any of the meetings that we have. So, Mr. Petto, would you please call the roll? Sure. Chair Bennett? Here. Mr. Hyman? Here. Mr. Greenbaum? Here. Mr. Rooney? Here. Ms. Kane Levy is absent at this time. Mr. Reimnitz? Here. Uh, and Ms. Hickey is here for Mr. Connell? Here. And Mr. Karasik is absent this evening. Just <laughs> note that our attorney is not here tonight, but Mr. Petto is here. <laughs> okay, we have um, approval of the minutes from July 25th. Does anyone have an opportunity to read over? Mm -hmm. And are there any comments, changes? I just have that. I have no comment. No? No comment? No comment. No comment. I, I, I have no comment. Okay. So may I have a motion to accept the minutes? Second the motion. We need a first. Oh, first motion, yes. <laughs> motion to approve the minutes from our previous meeting. I okay. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, minutes approved. Uh, next is public comment. Would anyone like to approach the podium and Here, give public comment on anything? that? Not an application. We can do that while you, after you make your application. No? Okay. And let the record reflect that Caroline Kane Levy has arrived, and we are our full complement tonight of commissioners. Um, committee reports. The Minor Applications Committee uh, met and we discussed signage on Bloomfield Avenue and Bellevue Avenue, uh, the Eagle Rock uh, Cafe. The revisions committee met. Maybe John, you could give an update on that. Uh, One three three Forest Street. Three three four Street. Oh yes. Uh, and Just we make sure. Yes. Uh, three three four Street, and we had a successful meeting there. Uh, the applicant was open to some of our suggestions about breaking down the massing of the proposed uh, duplex that they were creating and rearranging the materials on the facade. Uh, that, uh, I just want to also say, that application should be typical hmm. of what gets pre pre you know, presented to this body. I, I know we don't have control over certain things that are not certificate of appropriateness, but we're going to work on that, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And Ms. Hickey, could you give us an update on the grant that you and uh, are working on for the first residential district in Montclair? Okay, so we're um, been doing the survey work for the Wheeler uh, Street or the, that there area. Um, the field work is almost done on on that one, on that one, and actually, I've just started to look into. I've been looking into the. Um, census materials and the mm. directories associated with that area and it's really very fascinating um, so I'm going to dive more into that and then Oakcroft um, which is a completely different type of residential area compared to Wheeler um, and we just started that one although we've started looking at the history first the the um, Wheeler's taking a lot of time in terms of the field work because of all the changes to the buildings I'm trying to really document them as much as I can um, so uh, Oakcroft uh, will be done, um, I think, a little faster than the, the Wheeler. Um, and then a draft of the history as well as um, sampling of the descriptions, like the, the information sheets, the survey sheets, will go down to the SHPO um, <coughs> next week. Oh, next week. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. oh, great. Okay. Okay, good. So you'll, okay. Have, you'll have a more, um, you'll have an up-to-date uh, for the next meeting in September, um, yes. another another yep. report. Yeah, actually, we'll probably be almost done at that point. So. Ah, okay, great. Yeah. 
Okay, thank you. Sure. Um, and speaking um, to Mr. Reimnitz's uh, comment, um, we, we had formed a committee to revamp the checklist for the um, certificate of appropriateness and I would like to um, reinstate that committee so that we can look at uh, applications that come into the office now for development of um, what is it called uh, de development applications so what we're going to do is ch is work on that checklist and um, have something a little bit more uh, tighter in terms of what uh, needs to be presented to the commission so, so I, yeah I think just to clarify procedurally the um, just for the benefit of everybody the checklists are codified by in the ordinance and uh, the checklist for the applications for development that is all set forth in chapter 202 the land use procedures chapter um, and that details the required submission items for applications filed to the planning board and zoning board um, so I think what uh, the chair is alluding to is forming a subcommittee to look at that ch checklist uh, that's it codified for the applications for development uh, and have a committee make some recommendations to augment or supplement those checklists um, and pass that recommendation along to the planning board the planning board then would recommend the ordinance change to the council that would be kind of the chain of right okay. which would take a uh, at least a few months so right. um, I just wanted to clarify the process got it mm -hmm. that's good yes. okay so do we have volunteers that want to work on that okay John great and Caroline and I will be part of that as well okay thanks um, old business as there is no old bu business we'll move straight to new business and um, the first application is application 2019-16597 Valley Road New York Community Bank it's a certificate of appropriateness for the installation of the new windows in the storefront it's the upper Montclair historic business district and um, Hi. So I'll swear you in. Are you the? Uh, you'll I'm give sorry? You'll give testimony, to. So. Um, well, well, I have to swear you in first. Do you have to raise your right hand. Do you promise to tell the whole truth? If I think that the truth. <laughs> okay. Yes, I do. Okay. So please continue. Oh, that's right. State your name. Uh, Fred Whitaker. Right. Affiliation. What's your affiliation? I'm sorry. What's your affiliation with this application? I am director of New York, New Jersey facilities management. For the bank? Yes. Okay. So could you tell us what, what, what's gone on there, please? So we had four windows replaced. Right. The windows that were there, um, the seals were broken. They were double paint. So there's a gas in the middle that came out. Those windows started to fog and were, were poor visibility. Um, and for the safety of not only the staff and the customers and the public, we replaced them. Okay. Uh, not okay. knowing that we had to go through this process right here for window replacement. We didn't alter the openings or anything like that. Right, so you replace them, being that it's in the Upper Montclair Historic District, uh, Business Historic District, anything that's on a replacement in kind, meaning it looks exactly the same, you would have to come before us. So uh, because you put in divided light windows, which weren't the same as what was there, that's the reason um, you would had to apply for a certificate of appropriateness. Yeah. So they're the, the ones that you have in now are... Um, uh, have the divided lights in Correct. them. Correct. Okay, so um, let's just give because this was a an application that came that was um, put forward to this month. So the commissioners, um, some of them just have to review the paperwork again quickly, and then we have a um, report from our historic preservation consultant, and the commissioners will ask you questions too. So just give us a minute. Does anyone else sure. No, thanks. No? Um, while the um, commissioners look over the, the package, let me just ask, did you have an opportunity to review the comments that um, uh, the consultant from Connolly Hickey provided? Yes. Yes. 
<laughs> Would you like to comment on those now? Other than the fact that I didn't know what he meant by it made the building look squat. <laughs> that I wasn't really quite sure of. Are these between the glass mountains? Or I'm sorry? What are these mountains between the glass? Or yes. Are they on the exterior surface? They're in between. It's a simulated glass. Mm -hmm. Right. And what was there before? Open. It was just a single just pane. It was a single pane storefront. Do, do anybody, yes, do you have a question? Yeah. When you say simulated divided light, I haven't really looked at it. Is the mutton bar captured between the two panes of glass, or is it really a simulated divided light where it's on either side and there's a division within? It's in between the two panes of glass, yeah. Mr. Greenbaum? I have no questions. I don't have any questions. I don't have any questions either. How about you? Can I ask my questions? All right. Nope. No. I, I do have a question, though. Um, I d come to I'm just wondering why we're looking at this after it's already been done. Oh, as... It's an enforcement action. Enforcement action. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, it was cited as a violation, so we required them to come in first. Got yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Replacement of the windows did not trigger a building permit, so we didn't have a chance to review. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Ms. Hickey, if you would like to expand on the comments. Yes. Ms. Hickey, would you like to expand on what's here? No, yes. Not necessarily no. in terms okay. of um, usually the, I think that the main problem is, is that the the proportion of the glass is square versus um, vertical, right? The, typically it's a proportion of tall to, to, to height to width that's not reflected here. Um, so, and it's a radical change in terms of there was just painted glass, which is actually more typical for a bank building, right? You have clear sight lines um, and not a lot of divided lights in, in, the, uh, in the bank. How many windows were we talking about? I think, I believe three. there were three, right? Four. Three windows? Four. Four. Four and four. Two yeah. on Bloomfield, uh, Bellevue, and two on, and two on Valley. That's correct. Well, I'll ask the question. Is it possible to take the muttons out of these, these windows? So when this all came about, I did ask the contractor, and he said it is not possible that I would have to replace those windows. All right. It's in the sealed unit. Mm -hmm. And the reason they're replacing it is because the seals were broken. So in order to do that, they have to redo the whole thing. Well, can it be reglazed no. uh, without changing the frame? No. Yeah. Well, can? Sure. Without changing the extruded uh, aluminum frame? Right. You just take that off. That's how it come. You put it in there. I thought the window was one complete unit. Is it one complete unit? The glass is one. There's there's two panes of glass there. Right. Oh, I understand that. Okay. But yeah. is it is the frame that when it was placed in? It's all one unit. It's welded. all one unit. It's all one unit welded. Yes. So that the outside extrusion is integrated with the actual. Correct. So then, in order to make any modification, you're talking about an entirely new unit going into the penetrated space. Correct. Okay. Yes, okay, so we'll start with comments then. I don't know. It's, it's, we, we set up, uh, you know, a, um, a situation where people can come in and just say they didn't know and they went ahead and did it and we have to accept it as it is, and that's a, that's a tough one. I, I, I don't think I could vote for that, so. I, I can't accept it either. I think that um, the thing, you know, this, we have 
limited designated historic districts and this is one street and I think the between the glass mountains and the configuration of the mountains just look really fake. Mm. So I would prefer to see a single pane or, or true right, exterior right. applied mountain in the correct configuration. But I think it's simpler just to go with a single pane window. Comments? So I concur with my colleagues. I mean, I'm very sensitive to the fact that you made the investment, you put the expense in to replace them for the functional value. But in our role, there's an aesthetic component in order to preserve the integrity of the historic district. And, um, you know, it would be very easy just to be conciliatory and say, yeah, it's okay, you did it, it's done. But to be honest with you, I concur with my colleagues in that um, it would be more appropriate to have uh, a more uh, a, a vertical aspect ratio uh, pane that's more considerate of the building. And I notice in, I don't know if there's a picture number, but your doors have a vertical mullion. Um, yeah, that's the, that's the door on the corner. And um, I, regrettably, from your point of view, I'm sensitive to your circumstance, but I, I personally would be more comfortable if it was a, uh, a, a vertical. Thing. And ideally, if the, if the mullion was an exterior mullion, so that it was more consistent. Because this is actually on the corner of Bellevue and Valley Road, which is probably the most prominent intersection, and it's catty corner to one of the most architecturally rich buildings, which happens to have vertical mullions, um, I would want to be sympathetic to that. And so, again, I know it's not a, something you want to hear, but I prefer to see it with the vertical mullions with the exterior mullion. I, I can I, I'll make one more comment, I guess. The option would be they could take it out and just put clear glass back in. That would be there. They could do that yes, instead yeah, of. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Then they'd be doing it as of right. As of right. 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 Yeah. In kind. Yeah. yeah. In kind. Yeah. Any a comment? Yeah, I don't have anything to add substantively, just procedurally. Um, we have to look at this as an application for um, C of A as if you were coming before us to get the approval to do the work. So we really can't consider the fact that it's already there and, you know, as my colleagues say, kind of concede um, because it does set a bad precedent, um, so. Yeah, and I'd just like to mention that I actually drove by that day and I saw the workmen out there and I told them to, to get in touch with the whoever was in charge of it to stop work and they said they couldn't, so um, they should have. <laughs> but I yes, concur. I understand. It was, and, you know, uh, someone had made a comment, I don't know, you know, to the branch maybe that we had done it over a weekend to hide it from the township and that was not the case. We take an opportunity a holiday weekend to do work such as that oh. in the branch. Okay. Well fair and enough. Yeah. It was a holiday weekend. Closed yeah. to the public. Right. You know less traffic on the sidewalk. This is a big job. Yes. Correct. No, we're we're sensitive to that too. Do you have uh, any other comment? No? Mr. Rooney? The well a single pane of glass, I don't think, matches, does anything for the building. Um, I'd like to have seen what it was before when they redid the building originally. Well, this is mm. actually a new building. This building was yeah. built, I believe, in the 80s. There had been a previous building there that was demolished. The place oh, it was demolished. So right. this is not the original building on the corner of Bellevue and Valley. And um, it had single pane glass then. Yeah, it's always no, before that, it was an entirely different building. No, I mean... As it was built. Prior, yes, I believe so. At no, least. no, you said that they replaced it because they lost the seal. No, no, no. I'm oh. saying that single pane glass was original to what just they put in. Originally, just a picture window. Originally, the picture window. Right. Okay. One thing I want to make a point of, too, is... Um, it may not have always been a bank. I don't know. Well, you have Frederick well, Goodman, which is next door, which is, I think they've closed since. But That's correct. But they have single pane. They have a single glass. So I imagine that there's a consistency issue as well. Um, that was going to be my point, that the, 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 the uh, other uh, businesses surrounding have single pane. So, you mean, um, you mean 
not divided lines. Not divided. Yeah. Non-divided. With right. no divided at right. all. I mean, the building was actually, it's not a, it's not a building of, uh, if I may use the expression, it's not a contributing building in the district. It's a harmonizing. It's a harmonizing, it's a harmonizing, harmonizing. building. So it's, it's net neutral. So, you know, um, uh, you know, this, a single pan, a single non divided light glass probably was done at the time of construction. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I think the the preference that Ms. Hickey has pointed out is that, you know, traditionally a window pane is historically an aspect ratio that's more of a portrait, not a landscape. So I think I think the conclusion probably is, if I if my colleagues agree, it should either be a vertical divided light with a true divided light or close to a true divided light with an out exterior emollient or it should be a single pane of glass. Can I make an observation? You know, if, you, if you actually added a, a mutton to the top, to on actually to each between each. Oh, sorry. If you add a, a mutton to each between, since it's a square, right, and then you added a mutton on top of the one that was in, that might be a compromise. The only question. But how would that, that would have to lay on top of it? Yeah, well, that's how a mutton would actually be applied anyway. But you're saying to lay on top of the existing ones and then in the middle? And then also in the middle, yeah. And on the other side so you get the depth. That you'd fixed want. to the exterior of the glass. Fixed so to the exterior. Yep, yeah, and fixed to the interior too so you get the glass, the, the depth. Oh. As long as, that's, as long as that structurally works. Structurally. The, the issue is, though, you get, yes, you get the exposed mutton. You get the exposed muttons mm -hmm. on both sides, but when you go by it, you can sort of see in between because it's not really it's got, it's a it's simulated it divided light. It doesn't light. have the grill between the glass. Yeah, that's right. So it's yeah. almost getting worse. I don't worse? know. To okay. me, it's just getting worse. Okay, that's fine. So. Okay. So, uh, question, Graham. Um, procedurally, uh, since the existing building had that single pane. Uh, they would be entitled as a right to just install in kind without mm -hmm. any type of approval. Mm -hmm. So a denial essentially lets them go and replace it. Mm -hmm. Okay, correct. So we don't have to approve anything with a condition. We just deny. Right. The just deny okay. Because mm -hmm. uh, essentially the applicant is applying for the mm -hmm. divided light, and you're just going to deny that condition. So, so, so I guess the position we have to take is we would deny it as it is, mm -hmm. but we say that it can be done in kind. And the preference would be for if they w were insistent upon divided light, that it would be a more of a vertical uh, aspect ratio. That that would be our condition. No, well, for denying it, there's no condition. Yeah, oh, there's no just denying. Yeah, okay. we're just denying. They want to do something that you come back. Right, yeah. right. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. okay uh, from so what I'm hearing is a single pane of glass mm -hmm. is going to be much better. <laughs> yes. yes. Probably so. Well, with that. So why don't we just say that? Yeah. Okay. okay. I'll make a motion okay. to deny the, the color. Let's talk about color. Okay. What's there is white. What was there originally? I mean, when when you when you replaced it, what color was it? Well, here we have pictures of it, don't we? Here. Yeah, you should. White previously. We have yeah, pictures of the prior. It was white. Okay. Here yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So stick with white. Just keep with okay. the, stay with what the white. So, so this denial, if we vote to deny, basically just replace it exactly as it was before, mm -hmm. single pane, same color, same everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're right. with. I'll make a motion to deny. And who seconds? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> that was quick. Sorry about that. Listen, it is what it is, right? Mm -hmm. We're a bank. We want to help make the town right. appreciate uh, that. Yeah, yeah. That, no, yeah. No, thank you very much. We're not going nowhere. Are you, are you, <laughs> are you <laughs> thank still you. affiliated with Valley National? I'm sorry? Are you still associated with Valley? No. 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 <laughs> okay. That was originally a Penn Federal. Oh, right. That was a Penn Federal. New York Community Bank acquired them. I see. Okay. okay. We're looking to acquire again, hopefully, <laughs> in the first quarter of 2020. Nice. I don't know who it is yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. Our next um, 
topic is the referral from the Board of Adjustment, application 2641, 117 Valley Road, um, L at 117 uh, Valley Road, LLC. This is a use variance and site plan for three new townhouses in the R2 two family zone. And we're seeing this because it is in a potential historic district, which is the Frog Hollow Potential Historic District. And um, this site is on the corner of Valley and um, uh, Walnut. So I just wanted to read that the potential district for Frog Hollow um, where is it? Yes, thank you. Uh, the potential district Frog, Frog Hollow area is originally developed was originally developed between the mid 19th and early 20th century. The area consists of two to three story single family houses built mostly in a vernacular Dutch style. The houses are sited on small lots and are set slightly back from the street facing lot lines in an irregular manner. Wood was a predominant historic building material. However, most houses in the area have been altered with synthetic siding, aluminum, replacement windows, or other contemporary elements. Frog Hollow was home to a variety of immigrant populations after these communities expanded from former wor mill workers housing in the South End. Although the, the area exhibits slow architectural integrity, further research on the social significance of Frog Hollow is recommended. Um, and we have the outlines of Frog Hollow in this map here. So, um, you're here. Has, can, may, can you state your name and, and uh, what your association is? Yes, uh, my name is uh, Perry Chavestic. I'm okay. the architect of the project. Zanelli, I'm the owner. I'm sorry? Teresa Zanelli, the owner. Okay. And um, if you could just raise your hands, you um, swear to tell the truth about this application? <laughs> yes. Okay, thank you. So could you walk us through what the proposal is? Um, okay. Um, from what was what's on the prop land now? She did. Can, can I just pause for a second? This requires variances, correct? That's correct. Can you explain mm -hmm. what those are first before we start uh, with the presentation? Sure. So uh, the applicant is proposing to construct a new three-family dwelling in the two-family zone. Um, that's a D1 variance to the Board of Adjustment uh, because it's uh, the three-family is not uh, permitted use in the zone. Um, the applicant also uh, has a variance for three stories where two and a half is the maximum permitted. Um, the applicant also needs a front yard setback variance for the Valley Road frontage where their minimum front yard setback is 25 feet. Um, and that was it. That's the extent of the variance. Three total variances. And uh, if I might Graham, add that yeah. on the um, information that Grant gave us on the first page, under project description, it says construct two new two-family dwellings. Yeah, apologies about that. It should be three single-family. Three, three, yeah. three, so three, three, three unit town. Yes, town three townhouses. Yeah, apologies. Uh, that's that's what it. happens when you reuse these. Forms. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have another question. This goes yes, back sir. to the applicate to the uh, submittal requirements. Mm -hmm. Isn't one of the submittal requirements a site plan? Yes, and there is an engineered site plan that Mr. Chevistick has there. Oh, so we didn't get package. it. We didn't yeah. get it. Did we get it? It's a single sheet. It's a single sheet. Yeah. 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 Oh. From a Weissman. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. Got it. I got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, sorry. One seventeen Valley. Right. So we saw this at New Development Review, and it's been changed considerably, based oh. on our recommendations. It's been changed since. It's yeah. turned around that different. We had direction. a work session meeting for this project. And we went back and forth and um, discussed better ways to do it. And they gave us very good advice. So um, I went back to the drawing board and basically oh. had to redraw everything. Okay. The site plan pretty much stayed the same. We had to add a little more items on there. Right. But the building, I, I changed it. Well, from, do you from have any any copies of what you're going to be explaining to this us? This is consistent this is with it. what you've received. This is it. Yes. This is the new one. 
what was in our packet is the new one? Correct. Yeah, because oh. a new, a new development review had the right. old one. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, we gave, Sorry. We gave one. I, thought, I thought there were corrections no, on no, what no. we received. No, no. Okay. You, you, you should have the latest one. Alteration. Yeah. What we asked them is East to elevation. pick up East some of the um, design details from the original building that burnt. Oh, okay. okay. And also turn them around because he had them driveways in the valley in the front of the building in the back. Oh. Correct. Okay. So we just had them flip them. Okay. <coughs> Basically we flipped the whole building and then changed it a little bit also. I see. It was a good idea because it gave a better view from Valley Road where before the Valley Road view Valley Road view of the building was the back of it. Now it's the front of it. Okay. So it's more really correct the way it's done now. Okay. And you, you're here before the um, HPC, before it goes to the zoning. Yes. Yeah. To see how this would fit in. Right. This building fits in within the proposed Frog Hollow Historic District. Exactly. Okay, so could you just walk us through um, briefly the, the front of the building, which is what you have up now? Yeah. Uh, the board that's um, illustrated now shows the Valley Road elevation view. And the other view is the Walnut Street view. Mm -hmm. These are the main views you're going to see, you know, from, from the street. Um, the Valley Road view, you can see there's three separate townhouses. They're all attached to each other. Um, the, the door at the bottom is the entrance door. On the ground floor is a garage, a family room. And then on the second floor is a living room, dining room, uh, dining area, kitchen, and a half bath. And then the top floor is two bedrooms and two baths. There's floor plans you have on your um Yes, we don't, we don't need to go through the floor plans. That, but that's the, what I figured. But the facade that I see up there is different from what we are looking at. In the e uh, oh. you, you look at the next sheet, maybe. Sorry, so hold on. Yeah, this is actually sheet number four. That's the west elevation. We don't have that. that that's a different elevation. We don't have that. We don't have that. Do we, is yeah, that we, what we elevation is that? The west? Uh, it looks like it's the west, but it's, it's a different the version of the west. That's, that's correct. You might have the older drawings, because I did make 20 more copies. Okay. I don't know. So this is different than what's on the website. Yeah, we had it done plenty of time. I did it right away. I don't know if they got mixed up, maybe. So let's just see what we have. So we're all in the same Your view like that has a garage door on it? The one you have? The garage door one I have is your east, east elevation. northern elevations. What I'm looking at is an improvement on what we have, but we don't have Yeah, that. we changed the whole <laughs> thing. It was an excellent idea they had. What, should, what is the date that's stamped on the front of your June plan? Nine, June 21st. June, does everybody yeah. have June 21st? Yeah, we have June 21st. That drawing is also June 21st. The site plan was changed, so yeah. it should be 724. The last revision. Yeah, we don't have that. We have old news. Yeah, we have uh, June 21st, May oh. 14 for the site plan. With no. Uh, you have May 14. I have May 14. And I don't have any of them. Sheet four is the one I'm showing here. This that's is uh, that's the east. That's yeah, the east. Yeah. So we were looking at four. My my safe plan is. Where do you see the date? No, this one still says June twenty fourth. Five fourteen. That's it. This one says June 23rd. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I see that. Yeah. All right. It's marked on the side, so it's vertical. Oh, yeah. so Paul, what we're looking at is home B, Valley Road, Ele yeah. Valley Road Elevation. Right. Yarrow Sheet 4. Right. Is this, oh, yeah. This has changed a lot. Yeah, I completely changed. Can you see? Do another set? Yeah. Thank you, Grant. Grant will show that. So we should discard you the discard that. Okay, so now we're all looking at 
of plans that were revisions <laughs> per DRC meeting. That's correct. <laughs> All right. So okay. now we can start. <laughs> now we got. <laughs> All right. It's all right. No, I see. I got to roll it over. This is uh, Valor. Where is it? Oh. So, if you could continue with your testimony, okay. three single um, townhouse. Okay, as I mentioned, there was three townhouse units, and they're attached. And uh, three levels was the lower level, at the, at the ground floor or the first floor is the garage level plus a family room. Um, the building I tried to vary the front as much as I could. I have gable roofs, hip roofs, bay windows, and little little roofs over the doors. Um, we, the roof is going to be a timberline, three-dimensional shingle. Um, around all the windows, I have the uh, historic sill. I have five quarter by six siding trim around it with a larger piece at the top and a crown molding. Um, the, the, the siding, I put hardy plank siding with a seven inch exposure. And then in the, this particular view, I mixed it with uh, hardy shakes on the base. But these top portions, they can leave her out. Mm -hmm. So they give it some dimension. And then below that's uh, bay windows. And the bay windows, I put the trim on the top and the bottom, like uh, five quarter by four, boxed out with cap trim in the inside. And I did the same thing for, you notice the two windows here, they're a little off-centered from the uh, floors, because the stair, they're at the halfway stair levels. The stair is not a full run, it's a half and then another half. Mm -hmm. So that's why they're a little off-centered, which has the same trim as the other windows. Uh, I put five quarter by six trim on the corners to make it authentic. Uh, originally we had uh, cultured stone on the bottom and it was suggested that we just stucco it, we m you know, be more in character with the neighborhood. So we removed the cultured stone. We have stucco on the bottom. I put roofs over the front doors just as protection for the rain mm -hmm. and to give it a little more depth also. There's brackets holding the doors. Um, the doors I'm showing and not necessarily the doors we're going to put in, they were just thrown in, uh, drew, drew, drew in. Uh, there was a suggestion from the historic architects that we use panel doors, which are probably more similar to the center door. Mm -hmm. So that would be no problem to do that. Um, I put a, on the top, instead of the, instead of the siding going right to the soffit, I put a fascia board at the top with a crown molding up there, make it look more authentic. And then it was suggested that we put a freeze board around the center. There's another board going here that goes around the whole building just to break up the height. And there's also a, a, a water, water table board, they call it, at the bottom. I looked at that also. Um, the windows themselves, I, I drew Anderson windows. I didn't draw simulated divided windows. But if that's something you want, you know, we could do, and you can see the way I drew the windows. They only have the grills at the top. We could put them at the bottom if you want them there. And that's no problem. It's kind of like a popular style today. People Say like that again. I'm sorry. The grills are, you know, we have a double hung window, the top sash and the bottom sash. Right. They only have grills at the top. Oh, I see. Okay. But if you want them on the bottom, we could put them on the bottom. Four or more. So, um, so you revamped your drawings based on the, the, um, Preservation consultants remarks. Yeah, a lot of the comments were those type. And then the big one was to flip the whole building because I had it more or less backwards. As I was drawing it, I was kept thinking I should turn it and turn it, but I, we made it to the meeting. Right. So I turned the whole building around, so I'll show you. So now we're looking at the, the driveway. Right, after the driveway side. The driveway is off Walnut Street. No, the drive. The this is the site plan here by Weissman Engineering, and the property is longer on Valley Road mm -hmm. than Walnut. So the building is set in this position here, and there's an entrance and exit on Walnut, and there's an entrance the and exit on Valley, and there's uh, extra parking over here. Wait, wait, where do mm -hmm. you park in here? Underneath, you come in off Walnut. Yeah. 
Yeah, it comes in from There's bottom. two driveways. There's okay, one at so it circles one. around. Right. Because mm -hmm. right. you know what the problem is? We're on a county road, and they have restrictions with driveway openings. You know, you, the certain distances, widths. So we had a, other many site plans drawn, and this was more or less one of the only ones we think we can get approved by the county, which is another thing we have to do. And it gave us better parking over here and better access. So now when people come in, they come in the fourth of, uh, they can come in either off of Walnut or Valley and they park in the back of the building, which is this side here. I call it the driveway view. And that's a similar, same textured materials as, as the front, the sides, they're all the same materials. And this side has, a, I changed the garage doors to carriage doors. You know, it uh, has like the fake hardware on it, the black hardware, like hinges and latches. Uh, the windows have the same treatment with the sills coming around it and the crown molding. And the balconies have railings on. There's, there's uh, balconies off the, um, I think it's off the kitchen area now. Before it was off the living room, now it's off the kitchen. So the, that's a small balcony, two by, oh, and the what are the balusters? The balusters, what, what I drew was um, uh, two by twos. Okay. You know, the, the handrail has some de definition to it in the base, and then it has posts on the corner. And then on the roof, I added a lot of dormers, because that street, if you walk down that street on Walnut, many of the houses have the dormers there. Mm -hmm. So I tried to blend in with the dormers. And then um, it was suggested by the um, historic architect that, that I draw a roof plan. I didn't know I needed one, otherwise I did it. So I drew one here. Yeah. So you can see it has a lot of character to it with the, with the dormers and um, these projections on the top here. Mm -hmm. That's the valley view side. That's yeah. the bumps that stick out. And then those are the smaller dormers. And then these all the small dormers around. Right. And I have a six on 12 pitch the long way and an 8 on 12 pitch the other way because it makes the uh, these extensions look better with a steeper pitch than a mile pitch. I didn't want to pitch the roof too high because then the building's going to become higher. Right. So it's going to look like it has a steep roof for the dome. But, and I tried to keep the height as low as I can because it's probably, we're probably at the height or lower than many of the houses in the area. They're, they're very tall over there. Mm -hmm. It's just that they won't wear one more story than that. Their attic is their third story, where our attic is nothing up there but the dormers. Oh. Are um, we able to ask questions? Yes. Are, are you finished with your description? Sorry? Are you through with your description now? Uh, are you finished with your description? No, if you have any questions. Yes, yeah, we'll start with questions. Okay. Mr. Randitz. I, I want to just check with Graham. So to, let me try and understand this correctly. Um, there are two variants we saw. One is for the height, and one is for the valley road setback. There's three variances. Three. Oh, and the extra unit, right. Yes. Three variances. Th three units, uh, the maximum number of stories. It's not height, it's the number of stories. Two and a half. It's just three stories. Um, and then the front yard setback on valley road, which is required 25 feet. But right now it proposes, I see it, a six and a half feet. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Did you consider any plans that would involve, um, at least with regards to this particular variance request, anything relating to, uh, did you consider um, being compliant with the 25-foot step back, step back on the Valley Road side? I, I tried to. The existing on this property, I don't know if you know what's what was there. I do. Multi-family things. So, so they, they wanted to put, originally I had four townhouses drill. Mm -hmm. And then I had the problem of the um, getting approval for the county road. I couldn't make the driveways work. So then we reduced it to the three townhouses. And more or less with the size of the property, the way it is, this is more or less like the only place I could put the building. So that's what, I needed the driveway in the back to get into the parking. 
and I had to push it more forward. Um, some of the comments we had at the work session was many of the other buildings adjacent to us are also very close to the street also. Like the one next to us is 3.9 feet away. And the existing building, I think, was close that way. So we felt that if we were going to ask for anything, that was less uh, detrimental. And and of course, I couldn't push the building back, and I had the driveway in the front. It wouldn't work. Graham, was there any kind of average um, on Valley Road? So this property, you do not do any averaging for this corner property because the averaging is only to consult adjacent properties in the same block and lot that are also in the same zone district. And the adjacent property at 125 Valley Road is located in the neighborhood commercial district, not in the R2 zone. So defaults to the 25-foot requirement. Which is the frontage on mm -hmm. Walnut. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So the averaging is only considers adjacent properties in the same zone district, and this this property is the last property in the in the R two zone district. Is it is the next building? Is that the School of Rock building? Uh, I don't yes. Know. Yes, it yes. is. Yes, mm -hmm. that is School of Rock. Correct. And what is the step? What is the setback from Valley As Road? As indicated on the submitted site plan by the applicant, that set that building is set back three point nine feet. 3.9 feet from the street. From the property line. Oh, from, from the, the property line, but from correct. the street. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, oh, from the property line from the sidewalk. Yes. From the edge of the yeah, sidewalk. from the property line. So yeah, and, the, and, this, and in this application, the applicant is proposing an 8.4 foot setback from that same property line. So but this building will be set back. That the 6.5 dimension is to the overhang, and the oh, yard setback is not calculated to an overhang that does not have a supportive post. This is a bracketed overhang. Yeah, that's the... the the little roof that's over right the I got it I got it yeah. so it's 8.5 feet back and the building next door is you're saying and that the 3.9 but the 3.9 is the staircase the steps going up or is it the yeah, there's a projected bay window that comes out of the front of that that's the building itself mm -hmm. okay and what just to make sure I understand on Walnut Street what is the required setback 25 25, 25. and what is it now uh, 28 In 28. So you're compliant on the Walnut Street side, right. the Valley Road side, because it's a corner lot, should be 25. That's the requirements set forth in the ordinance, correct? But right. the current the current building has a, has a the existing building that's on the lot now has a front yard setback of 11.5 feet. And that's a grandfather condition. Yeah, well, our setback actually condition. varies from 8.4 to 10 because the property is not exactly square; it has a little slope to it. So. Closer to Walnut Street, it's 10, and then it drops down to 8.4, mm -hmm. going towards uh, uh, north. North, correct. Okay. So, do you have any questions? Um, I have a question. Is this go? Is this address on Valley or is it on Walnut? Now, uh, it's the proposed. Va oh, proposed. I don't know, but right now it's 117 Valley. Okay. The, what you're. And, um, Probably it would still be Valley because they all face Valley. Yeah, and just Fronts. for the benefits of the commission, the uh, Township Engineering Bureau sets addresses for properties in the township. So I always thought that house was on Walnut Street, the existing house. The, the yeah, address. Yeah, address. address. I think I think I yeah. do actually, in fact, think the property had dual addresses because oh. of the, the <coughs> rooming units. That some were mailboxes on both sides. Okay. Yeah. For yeah. A of time. yeah, the address is one seventeen though. Um, I, I have another question. Your impervious surface seems to be uh, almost the whole entire property. Um, have you got a, 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 a landscaping plan that you're going to add? You've got a couple of little bushes thrown no, in. No, no, we, we have a landscaping plan. Oh, you do? I came okay. prepared tonight. Okay. <laughs> Just in case. I wasn't sure if we were going over the building or everything. But the landscape plan was made later, though. I don't Yeah, it was, it's not been submitted yeah. yet. To the, to the and we were going to submit this, I guess, to the. Uh, we're going to zoning board. Zoning board. Zoning board. We had a plan made, and we'll see how, you know, how <coughs> is, it, is there a requirement for the percentage of impervious service? The R2 zone district does not have an impervious coverage requirement, so Thank you. there's no requirement. We, we do have landscaping all along the front here. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another green area here next to the driveway, and then he has bushes all around the sides, and then I think they were proposing a, a new fence along the side just to buffer the, the name around. But what type of fence will that be? Oh, solid PVC fence? I don't, I don't know. That's what's on your site That's plan. That's what's noted on the site plan. Right. All right. Oh, those are my questions. Thank you. Okay. Um, did you consider doing some 
something using the existing footprint and volume of what's there now with the new construction? You mean like the existing foundation? Yeah. No. I, th I think that the building is pretty much shot. Well, no, I mean not just the size and placement oh, the size. of the current house. The size is probably s a little small in this. I wouldn't be able to fit these units. These units aren't really that big. They're 2,000 square feet, which includes the lower level, but not the garage. So, so it probably would be too small, the units, and maybe they wouldn't be marketable or the rooms wouldn't be a good size to live in. It's like, it's like an optimum size. Mm -hmm. I've, I've did uh, units like this before, and uh, they're very nice standing with the wee Mr. Rooney? Um, the existing building, how many units were in there? Um, ten. 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 ten eleven, yeah. Right. So. But to clarify, these were rooming units. They, they were rooming have kitchen units. facilities in each of yeah. those rooms. There's mm -hmm. uh, a boarding house. There's a boarding, There's a boarding house, rooming house. house. Right. I have a question, another question. Do you know how tall is this going to be? Do you have that indicated on any of these? Yes. You did say it was going to be lower than the surrounding but yeah because you know, the buildings are very tall in that neighborhood they look nice but they're tall this is 34 feet 11. i think i kept it one inch below the uh tile behind okay. 35. 36. Yeah. yes 35 feet is the maximum right. okay. are there any other questions um miss hickey could you just um discuss what from his description, what has that has been addressed from Mr. Conley's comments? Is there anything outstanding that? Because um, he had a, a number of things that went away, right? So mm -hmm. use the panel door. Um, there is a on the on the rear elevation, which you know I don't, I don't know. Um, there's still one window. It's a little still too close. It looks too close. But I think his concern was, um, you know, how you're going to address the roof leaders. Yep. Sorry. The one that that with that window there. Let me show you. That's a bathroom window. Yes. And I on the comments from the um, historic architect. And it, it had more to do with making sure that the the leader didn't end no, up. No, the leader will fit. Okay. Because yeah, I ha what I have is I have the corner board. Okay. With the leader, I go right next to that. And okay. I have about another foot after that, so. And then it looks like you, you beefed up the dimension of the corner boards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had uh, okay. five quarter by four and I made it five quarter by six. Okay, and then the egress, the egress windows, we were just making sure that it was accurately drawn? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Right. These are all, every bedroom is egress window. Okay. Um, and then you added the historical sill? Correct. Okay. Um, and you got rid of the windows. Well, I guess the windows still project into the foundation, but you know what? It's no, I, I could fix that. Okay. You see the windows go into the base. I could just um, make the bottom smaller and, and the line up right with the side. Yeah. So this way, yeah. Th so that the the water table yeah. kind of. Many of the comments I could. Okay. Um. Um. So the the balcony is a true balcony. Yes. Or is it a what are those things called? No, it's true. It's okay. I think it's five by eight. Okay. Um, and how is it supported? Is it just is it just project? It's cantilevered inside. Okay. It's attached to the joists that are inside. All right. I, I don't think you have room for what he was asking mm -hmm. about. Right. So um, I don't know. It's with the garage, it's kind of stacked. Place, right? Yeah, it, it's a l that's a little weird. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they don't line up, which mm -hmm. I I understand probably why, because you know the the way the but it works with the interior. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. You can see that. All right. Well, maybe Would you guys can discuss further yeah. about that. Um, can you go back to the front? Unfortunately, I don't, I don't have the updated plans and probably the need new glasses, back. but. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can find it. Uh, it's The, the the one thing about the overhanging roof um, you know having it is is nice but 
what what normally happens is the it it should it should be tighter to the door and and not necessarily line up with the bay window. Um, I'm on the front, yes. Oh, yeah, yep, she's sorry. speaking to the overhang over the entry doors. Yes, overhang over the entry doors, which is that, that elevation there. Um, you know, typically sort of the, the, the light comes in closer to the door and, and shines on the, the entry, and then that the, the overhang is a little tighter to the door so that it kind of feels like it's more with the door than kind of, it feels right now like it's more with the bay window. It's like floating yeah. in space. Yeah, right? exactly. Yep. And I can make it the same width as the, with the five quarter by six on the side. Yeah, so usually the, the brackets sit to the uh, opposite side of the, the trim and then the door sits over the, you know, the hood the hoods, hood, hood sits over that and then comes down just a little bit. I mean, I know it depends on head height and all that kind of stuff, but um, it just looks a little odd, like it, it belongs to the bay window and not, not to the door. Um, when, I, when I designed it, I was thinking about furniture moving in. And the width, I was thinking about two people staying out of the rain. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's why I drew it. Yeah, I know. Um, I, I mean, the, the other the other option is though, if for a, a bigger canopy, right, then you would have actually supports, right? So then mm -hmm. it's almost more like a stoop. Mm -hmm. Then that's a kind of a different. A like portico. Yeah, it's a, it's a different uh, nomenclature. So it would it get it would get wider and bigger. And, and then the issue is, I think his, um, I think the reason they did the. Um, bracketed roof was partially related to the setback. No, I just put the brackets in to give it a better look. Otherwise, if you build those type of roofs and you don't put brackets, it looks like how's it holding? It. Right. No, and no, I understand that, but I'm just thinking why you didn't do. Let's no, it's say only two feet columns. It would hold. It would hold itself. That, that, that small roof. So, so this two foot overhang will be set lower. Will be. Well, right. We're going to lower this. Right. And then make it tighter to the width of the door plus yeah. the trim. Okay. Which you see that I like that a lot. Right. Um, I don't know. I, I think you guys might want to discuss the garage balcony thing a, a little more. Um, I think I think there's a lot we want to discuss. Okay. <laughs> um, the side elevations look like they've Im improved, but I, I still don't see the balcony drawn. Yeah, yeah, how it projects, how far it projects, what it looks like. It would be on this side. Yeah. Right. Um, he did <coughs> provide a roof plan. Uh, go, the dormers were not shown. I guess you didn't have dormers on the previous. I um, no. uh, just wanted to add a comment there that those three dormers on the back kind of look odd because they don't line up with anything. Um, can, I, can, I, can you lift that up to see the back? Yeah. There's three dormers that, that mm -hmm. relate yeah. to each section. Yeah, but they don't relate to anything below it, right? So. No, I just kind of spaced them. Yeah. The right, the yeah. windows didn't line up. Yeah. And I'm not sure you need them is my point. Mm. Well, I think what you just said. Considering they're on the back. What's that? Considering they're on the back. Right. And they're not lighting anything, right? They don't serve any purpose because that's no. just an attic. No. No, it's a living space. No, that's space. living space. No, there, no, no, no. Where the dormers no. are. Oh. No. no, this level here, the top level of the roof with the dormers, that's not living space. So then I have a question. They're just for decoration. Really. If, oh. if you have a dormer, if you have a, a third floor that's not living space. No, that, that's, I have a that third floor that's living floor. space. That would be like a fourth floor. One, it's just added. Okay. So if, why not? Can I get the, are we at a point of comments or no? No. No, not yet. Well, uh, so the, the first comment, because I did go from the bottom up, because <laughs> uh, he had addressed a, a number of things, was sort of the massing and the alignment of stuff. So I think that's a, a point of major discussion, of discussion, right? That's, so. But yeah, the, the, the dormers I find to be not, not necessary on, on that elevation. Uh, on the rear elevation. On the rear elevation. Okay, so we, we discussed that. Um, did you go through everything then? I did, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. But it, it appears that you've addressed all of the architect's comments, uh, the consultant's Yeah, comments. the only thing I would ask is the windows. If you like the windows the way they are, or you prefer more grills. Well, I think we'll discuss that now. I'll bring it up. Um, 
So why don't we start with the, the rear elevation? Mm -hmm. Well, well can here we I have. To, are we going to do comments, do comments well, but in should, order? Wait, but should the comments be? You said just the rear elevation, but why can't we have? Can we make comments about the whole project? Yes. Uh, yes. We'll but we just that that yeah. Let's, we'll let's just talk about the rear. Rear and we'll now, and then we can. Well, okay. No, I think we should talk about. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. We want to talk about massing and all that. Yeah, first. I think there's a bigger issue here. Yeah. It's a massing okay. issue. It's the three variances. Here are. Okay, uh, I'll start in the back anyway. I don't see any reason. I looked at the interior plans, and I realized there's a little, there's some symmetry on the interior plans, but I don't see any reason why the windows and balconies cannot be adjusted so they're centered on the garage doors. I just find that disturbing. Um, I would also, um, if we're doing, um, it looks like we're doing four over one in terms of the windows except for a couple windows. I would tend to put divided lights in the uh, sliding glass doors as well. Where are the sliding glass doors? Right here. Oh, on the second okay, floor. Yeah, talk about that. Okay. Um, and um, are these lighting fixtures actual lighting fixtures you're proposing? No. They're no. just something I had on my computer. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, because they need, really would, stand out. Would you need so to know if they're exactly. going to be in Well, we, we would ask that you come back to the... Or to the revisions, to committee. The revisions the committee. committee. with that. So don't, <coughs> just as long as that's where the placement okay. is. Yeah. Um, uh, John, so are you in agreement with removing the dormers in the back? Removing the dormers? That would make that a, just a flat roof all the way across. I, I think it needs some relief. I, I would make those dormers larger, if anything. Mm -hmm. So, okay. um, uh, on elevation, let's see that. I guess I'm most concerned about the elevations facing Valley Road and Walnut Street. So if I was looking, which I guess are both on one page, um, <coughs> are there? Oh, okay. uh -huh. I agree that the uh, overhangs, and it's hard to tell how big they are exactly or how far they project. The overhangs over the doors should be the brackets should be brought in. That's the same thing we had on St. Luke's. Right. Okay. Um, uh, and made to feel more like they belong with the door. Um, is the uh, bottom level poured concrete? No. It's framed on slab, and then that's cement stucco. This way the bottom is not wood right so the ground. But, but the doors are showing sitting about three inches off the off of gray. That's right. correct. So but your framing so the framing is under gray? No, the, what they'll do is they'll pour one big slab and it'll be about three or four inches off the finished gray. And then they'll frame up from there. And then what I usually do is I put womanized plywood at the bottom, and then they put the tar paper, wire lamp, okay. and stuck at the bottom. So, but the actual floor itself is concrete at that level? first floor is concrete. Okay, that's what I was asking. Yeah. I was okay. trying to get the, how you got so close to grade with your entry door. Is there a basement? I no. It's right on, on grade. Um, was there a basement in the previous building? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think so, yeah. My other comments would be that uh, I think this is an improvement over the previous scheme. Uh, 
I think the doors themselves are going to be important. So when you're saying you're just throwing them on there, I guess I'd like to see what those look like. And I would suggest the door in the middle is the best of the bunch. And then the Walnut Street elevation, uh, I guess what bothers me about that elevation is the overhang on the right on the third floor. If there was some way you could make that elevation symmetrical. Um, Actually, when you when you look at this view, the overhang. Oh, that's the, that's the whole floor. That's right, yeah. Those are my comments. I first want to ask a question of um, Graham. Graham, the district that this is in, the zoning district, is a what? R2, two family. Okay. And the contiguous lots, are they also in the same zone? Everything to the east yes. along Walnut Street, yes, is in the R2 zone. As you go north on Valley Road, it's the neighborhood commercial zone. The property okay. immediately adjacent to the north of this one along Valley Road is in a different zone district. Right, so the Valley Road is commercial district. Correct. Walnut is R2. Correct. Okay. Um, so, I mean, you're, a, you're asking for a lot. You're asking for three variances. You're asking for a, a three-family when it's, in fact, it's a two-family zone. You're asking for a front yard setback of roughly eight feet when it should be required by by, by code by code twenty five feet, right? That's correct, but the, the existing condition is eleven and a half. Eleven and a half. Got it. It's important to note that there's a lot of existing conditions on this site that it will be eliminated by this, and that you know this is really getting into the purview of the zoning board of adjustment, which considers a lot of those things. For example, as uh, the applicant testified, this was a ten room rooming house, which right. is way not conforming in the R2 zone. So right. three units is much closer to conformance. <laughs> These are a lot of things that there's benefits and detriments. There's positive and neg negative criteria. There's suitability of the site. There's a number of things that the zoning board will consider as part of their uh, you know, deliberation of the requested variance by the applicant. The, the footprint of this is how many square feet on the ground? Uh, I don't know exactly, but I do, I do know this. If you look at the zoning schedule, the, um, you're allowed 25% lot coverage. What the previous here? lot coverage was 26.9. The previous one? The previous one. And what is it now? The new one's going to drop to 23. 23. So I guess the building, because there's a garage on the property. Yeah, there was so a garage, detached garage. So those two were more garage. than the building we're putting. All right. I, I think that um, I would like to see you have the center gable running the length of the building parallel to Valley Road. And then you have the dormers on the rear, and you have the gables facing Valley. Right. Um, I would like to see, me personally, the roof line drop between the gables so that you break up and make it look more like three, that there's a break in the roof line. So that instead of having that one long extended gable to the break long, it the down. The one long ridge, you mean. The long ridge, right. right. I would want to see that bridge break in two places in between the gables to take some of that massing out, which is really not necessary. Um, I believe that the dormers on the rear should be larger, should be more roughly in scale with the gables in the front. Well, if you, if you drop the ridge, What's going to happen is you're not going to fit the dormers. Um, if you then drop the ridge just in, in between, now the ridge I'm talking about is in between the two gables. Oh, in between. The gable, the the ridge that runs the parallel to Valley Road. This one here. Yeah. The long one, yes. I would like to see, in order to bring the massing down and to make it a little more fitting within the residential, as opposed to what looks like a condo, multifamily condo project on our main resident one of our residential streets it's actually a very important intersection watch uh, uh, walnut and valley so one way to mitigate some of the effect would be to drop that ridge line down in between the gables um and to create like a a, a three rhythm um and then the gable the, the the dormers in the back need to be more substantial 
And the only other thing I have is, are there any projections in the facade facing Valley Road? I can't tell in your drawing yeah, if anything projects besides the bay the window. Bay, the bay window, the roof, and then these little pieces here. They project they out. They project also, yeah. I would like to see, this is an aesthetic thing, <coughs> I'd love to see some console brackets below that projection above the bay window. Something that brings some, like a three, like a triglyph, oh, like three, three um, uh, consoles supporting that so it actually looks, it reads. Yeah, but it wouldn't work in our case. I could put two, but not three. Because in the center is the bay window. Right. And this bay projects out. So, okay. Two, two, two on either side. side. Two, two yeah. on either side. Yeah, that I could do. That would be, that would be an enhancement. So, if you were able to do the console brackets and break that ridge line running north-south, I think that would make a big difference. Um, in terms of the cultured stone versus stucco, um, first of all, two things. The landscaping plan will have a big effect on this. Um, one question I want to ask, why didn't you include a basement in this project versus the original property had a basement? White. I know there's an excavation cost or whatever, but no, it really wasn't the cost. The, you, you, the basement you wouldn't need it here. You, more or less, your first floor is not a basement, but it's like when it has your garage and it has a family room. But to put a basement under these, it'd be, it'd be too much. Well, I, I thought maybe if you had to, if you needed the square footage, that the that upper ridge line, because remember, this is supposed to be a two and a half story lot, and you're asking for a three story but lot. But wouldn't you lose the parking? Right. We're no, no, no. The parking is at the first floor level. So no, if I had to push it in the ground, then you won't be able to get that garage door in. Oh, but couldn't you have the basement below the, um, just below the foundation and still have the garage? No. No? No, because I, I need the full height of the garage starting from grade level up. I'm not saying that the, the car in. I'm not saying the garage should be in the basement. I'm saying that the, there should be a lower, there should be maybe like a, yeah, the, the topography doesn't work for it. Put that square footage to this. Yeah. No, below grade. I know why you're adding square footage. Well, just as a means of mitigating what's needed on the top. If they needed it. Well, sometimes when you have a grade that's sloped, you could do what you say. Right. I can come in at the lower level and put the garage in the bottom. But this property is... No, but I'm not saying the garage. I'm just saying below the actual residential to have some kind of... Oh, listen, that's up to you. All I'm saying is I would like to see a split in that ridge so that you could right. bring it down to roughly to, to, to create the equivalence of a two and a half story elevation. Right. Okay. Um, Why? So uh, addressing the variances, um, I don't have a problem. Uh, I don't have a problem with... Um, the extra dwelling okay, unit, especially I considering this that. was a 10 unit boarding house, uh, there's some mitigation of that. Um, you know, just eyeballing the fire damage uh, and just for the be benefit of the commissioners, um, there's a case to be made that this structure could be reconstructed, preserving all of the existing conditions. So, you know, I think this, this application is a step up. Um, with respect to the setback variance, um, when you look at Valley Road, which is, you know, what that that var variance is for, um, it's consistent with its neighboring property. It seems to be consistent with the. Actually, I don't. I'm not sure because it's Walnut Street, but um, all of the properties surrounding the subject on Valley Road are all commercial uses. Um, so this corner property kind of has to marry that commercial district with the residential district um, going down Walnut Street. So I, I, I think that the way they have it set up um, is a good, a good way to marry those two. Um, I think with respect to that Walnut Street elevation, because you have residential going down that street, I'd like to see a little bit more detail. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe windows. Like, yeah, making the, the windows a little bit more substantial, similar to what you have fronting Valley. Um, that way it's kind of 
it, it seems it, it's yeah. more unifying the as you're going. The up. problem would be that they probably wouldn't fit inside. Mm -hmm. that, that's I, I when I did these type of buildings before, I never had these windows, but I knew we had to make the side look the best we can. But if I had to make them wider, I think they'll start hitting the walls inside, other other walls, interior walls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you do two windows? Mm -hmm. Split them up so it's not centered over the door. You have them on the other side. Left and right. Yeah. I would think it's nicer from an interior point of view as well. Well, then you, what happens is you put too many windows inside and you have no wall space. <laughs> and then you're putting like furniture against windows. Mm -hmm. and yeah, well, one it's, it's like a it's a balance between the interior and the exterior. Yeah. Well, I think one of the recommendations could be to um, look at that Walnut Street yeah. facade. See, see, this is the window I put here. You right. see, like, right. it's the living room. and it, I guess this one you could make it double. Yeah. This one might be a little difficult because there's a wall right here. Yeah. So but I could make could the bottom. symmetrical. I mean, you got all wall in one window. So yeah. when you say you don't have enough wall left on the inside. Yeah. I, 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 looking at Walnut Street, I, I, I think you should design it in a way that it would look like the front of of More a single houses. family. Um, I do agree with uh, the comments from Mr. Rimes about um, the garage and the balcony mm -hmm. um, and also the uh, uh, multiple lights on the sliding glass door. Um, I think that's all. All right. Um, I do agree with Mr. Hyman. I do think that the facade on Walnut Street should be just reworked with either more windows, two windows on either side of the door to make it fit in more with the residential uh, homes that are on Walnut Street. Because you do have the same setback as the other, as your neighbor on Walnut Street as well. Right. Um, and then as far as the roof line on the Valley Road side, I, I don't think you're going to really notice it that much as you go down the street. I think what you'll really see is the facade on Walnut Street. That's why I'd like to see more attention paid to that facade. <coughs> um, Is there an actual entrance to the building on Walnut Street? Mm -hmm. N no, that entrance goes into, into the, the garage. garage. That goes into the garage. It just was there to make it look, you know, look nicer. It doesn't, I guess they could use it, you know, if they want to use it as coming in the garage. Will there be a walkway to connect it to the yeah, driveway? Yeah, yeah. Yes, so it all the way looks like a okay. real entrance. Okay. And are you thinking of the, uh, all the doors will be um, the same? They're, you're not going to use different doors, right? No, we can make them all the same. Probably simple panel doors. Is panel doors. Okay. Next time, I don't know if I'm coming back here. Mm -hmm. No, you go to the zone. Yeah, so no, just, I mean, well, so just to explain, just oh, to explain no, to the applicant, sorry. typically the commission will request a condition of the zoning board that oh. you'll return to this body to review door selection, yeah. lighting fixture selection, sure. review no, no, siding, no, and all those things. Right. So that would be a subsequent at the end of the road after your approved mm -hmm. item. And it could be an on-site. Yeah, that's an on-site thing right. with the subcommittee. Do you, mm -hmm. Just a, did you have any specification of materials at this time? Like, for example, are we talking about wood? Wood. Um, the elevation the siding was that hardy plank siding. What's that? Hardy, hardy plank. Hardy plank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the the kind of oculus windows on the top are those windows or those vents? What that is, the interior. The, the, it's a vent. It's more for decoration. And um, the trim around it, I was going to use the same trim that we use around the windows, but make it into that trim. It's not a whole plastic unit. Is there tripon type material or? No, no. You make it on the job. You take, uh, they make sheets of uh, Azac, you know that? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, Azac. They make yeah. sheets of that so you can cut the circle out and you add the keys around it. Is it if, you, if you put it out of plastic, and it's not going to match around the windows at all. It'll look horrible. So you, the make, you make the trim around it, but the interior vent itself is, is plastic. Well, that's something that we could request to see also. Well, yeah. Would you can, would can could you consider putting glass windows there, round windows? You could, because it's in the attic. I think that would, well, and it's not my turn, but I would think it would be nicer to have windows there. Yeah, it's the same size, so you, you want to you want to reduce the massing. That's all. Um, were were you the owner when the house burnt down, or you're a new owner? I was the owner. 
Oh, okay. I'm sorry that that happened. That Thank was you. real tragedies, and, and it's terrible about you know all the people that were displaced as a result. Um, but I, I sort of am thinking about what David was saying, and I, I personally don't think this is the right typology for this site. I, I don't think that, that we have townhouses in the center of Montclair. And I would have per preferred to have seen something more similar to the massing of what's presently there. And whether it's reduced to three families as opposed to ten, I think there w could have been a way to work that out. Um, so, and, and there are many, many houses in Montclair that could have been used as a model, multi-family houses. There's a development that occurred recently at the corner of um, Claremont and Grove. There are three uh, two, two, two family, family houses that were built. Two family and two, one three family? No, Claremont. two family, two two families yes. and one one family. Yeah. That are very handsome and really fit into the context I, of the I, historic I district. What? It was, I looked at them because it was suggested. Yeah. They have very similar trim around, you know, features. Mm -hmm. Right. Those were duplexes, two duplexes and the right. one. This it's actually has more detail than that. Well, it's not how much detail. <laughs> it, it was the right detail. But those are also <laughs> separate units. Those are individual right. freestanding homes. This is a three-unit right. apartment right. building. Right. Those were two duplexes and a single. I didn't know the corner one was a single family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The corner is a single family. Yep. Anyway, I, I think having three townhouses is really alien to Montclair. Um, so I'm having a problem with this. And I don't feel comfortable with it at all. Um, I mean, if I had to speak about finessing the details, there are certain things about the Valley Road facade, the, the symmetry of, you know, stacking the door under a bay window, under a pair of windows. Something just looks wrong to me about that. Um, and the the gutters around the uh, gables of those bays. Just be careful of that. I think I've heard them called lamb chops before. It's it's just a detail that is modern construction that isn't typical of well, any of the historic. Pork chops. Lamb chops. Pork chops. <laughs> The, the, the gable returns of what are not gable returns on the gable. Oh, these things, yeah. Yeah, yeah those things. Like some kind of little roofs there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you can yeah, turn the roof around. Yeah, yeah, usually it's a molded cornice return that actually returns yeah, on itself. Use the right term, port yeah. tops. Port top. So I think that needs to be looked at. This? No, the, the HP element. Oh. So, um, and then also, I, I don't know if it's doable, but I... It might help to have a porch as opposed to just a door hood, bringing something down. But would that be another variance, or would that? Well, it would just reduce the setback to six. Yeah. Uh, six point five. I think. I, guess. I think it would be more typical to have some sort of a porch uh, instead of just a door that lands right on the sidewalk. Um, yeah. So th those are my comments, but I, I don't think I can. Well, I don't know if we're voting about this. We can't vote. Really no, we're not voting. Recommendations. <laughs> the, those are my thoughts. Um, where are you planning on putting the air conditioning compressors? Good question. I, I, I plan putting them on the um, plan. We're going to require them to have a walkway over on this side here. Yeah. That's the driveway. On the north. north. On the north. That's probably where the um, utilities probably going to be also. They have that electric meters and stuff. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, yeah, I agree with my other commissioners that you know you have to work out some of the balance of the details. I don't have any problems with the variances on this project because I think it's actually reducing 
density through there and I think it's a transitional building that it's transitioning from the is the closeness of um, the buildings on Valley Road to how setbacks are on Walnut Street. I think it's kind of a nice transition. Um, I don't know if you know what the building was for. It was arson that, so one of my tenants burned the building down. Mm hmm. There was anything that I. No, 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 I don't mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to. Yeah, you know. well, I understand, yeah. Um, other than that, I think it sort of works. Okay. Any other comments then? We're ready to do I, our recommendations. I, I have a question. Are there any fireplaces in this building? No. Okay. No, there's no chimneys. Well, that's my point. There's no chimney, so that's why I asked. Okay, so we're ready to go over our list of recommendations? Yes. Um, oh, wait, this is a certificate of appreciation. No, 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 it's just comments. Comments, so recommendations just comments to the Zoning, zoning Board of Adjustment as they okay. consider the application. That, uh, before we go with this, I have a question. What if we say, we, say, we think we don't like it? How, you know, we can sit here and noodle when we think this should be to the left, this should be to the right. But at the end of the day, if we don't think it's appropriate or if it's wrong, that can be your comment. To the that's, that's your comment to the, the board. But it has to be a consensual. Doesn't it have to be a, a consensual. Like, help me understand procedurally here. How we've handled this previously is that there's a, if there's a difference of opinion, we express that in the memo. There's a difference of opinion. Okay. So every statement that's made will go on the record in the recommendations to the Board of Adjustment? No, we, t well we typically read through. The, the, the most best recent example is we had a difference of opinion regarding placement of the statue at the art museum. Mm -hmm. We stated in the, in the recommendation to the Planning Board that some commissioners felt that it should stay in place, some commissioners felt that it should be moved, that, that, or it should be free to be moved as the museum saw fit. So we, we couched the recommendation to highlight that there was not uniform agreement among the commission. Okay. So I, my, I think my recommendation first here on this would be to, it sounds like there's some difference of opinions regarding the proposed three townhome development. So I think there should be an opening statement on that. And you know, if there's a difference of opinion, I think you can make that comment. So, um, and we can s you know explain that some felt it was okay, some didn't. Um, and then from there, we can move into the recommendations regarding design of the building. That's just my recommendation as to how you could proceed. So, okay. So the opening statement would would read that um, there was difference of opinion as to the. Well, I guess that's what we need to ascertain from you. All. Right. I've okay. heard varying opinions, but I don't know exactly what. So should we go back through? Or how do we do this? Well, let's just start with the the major. What we agree to the major. Yeah. 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 We'll start with the major issue, which is it being a town hall and the associated variances with that. Um, and then we'll get to the specifics of the design elements for that. We can take an informal poll who's in, in support of the proposed three townhome development and the yeah. requested variance. We have to remember we're looking at this in terms of right. it being a historic district, mm -hmm. potential, potential historic, historic district. district. So that, that's mm -hmm. what we have yeah. to If it wasn't a historic district, it would not would come to us. Exactly. Right. Well, this isn't well, a, potential a potential historic district. But what I'm saying, if it was not. It was not identified in the master plan. Yeah. Yeah. So what and, we and could s say is that um, three-story attached townhomes are not consistent, consistent, consistent with, yeah. within the Frog Hollow yeah. area. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is really borderline Frog Hollow and the Walnut Street. Like, it really mm -hmm. kind of, it's like really, to be honest with you, it's the, it's the, it's the, corner, sta it's the corner point of what would be Frog Hollow. It's yeah. really a visual. And if I'm not mistaken, isn't this Caddy Corner? You might, I'm sorry. It's not catty corner to uh, the uh, walk, the monument, the rock. That's no, so that's part of the next block. That's Claremont. Okay. So let, let's concentrate yeah. now on what we're going to mm -hmm. say. Let's okay, look so at look at before I say anything further. Think about the Claremont Street corner with the monument. No, that's and not this. That's, 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 yeah. district. that's nothing to do. So with it, and I think that's what the challenge is because the frog. We're looking at the Frog Hollow area. But there are also influences from Walnut Street, the other side, and there, it's also a commercial district. 
that it's directly uh, adjacent to. So right. this is really, I mean, it's, harmonizing is not the, the term, but I mean, you can think of it as having to harmonize those three very right. different areas. And that's the architectural challenge. Yeah, and and I, I think I, I agree with Caroline that, I mean, even when you look throughout Montclair, you know, you don't see townhomes like this. Um, but for me, in terms of just putting that aside, the placement, the density, the massing, I think it's, and the setbacks, I think it's perfectly fine. Um, so I'd be in favor of the uh, the variance is requested, but I think as, as Caroline um, happily pointed out, um, I don't think a, a townhome is the way to go. Well, I don't understand. I, I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. I just let you start phrasing it. Was put together that essentially we don't like the motif the of mo three. Uh, a town 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 image. Yeah. Right. We don't okay. have a problem with the setbacks and the variances mm -hmm. and so on, but we have a problem with the image. Okay. The so the first, the first comment would be that the commission supports the requested variance relief by the applicant for the, for the number of units and the mm -hmm. setbacks of the building. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know and the though. second comment. I don't know though. Be you see, in order to give that variance, in order to say we support that. The building has to make gestures, has to make uh, make a certain so degree the of. The second comment that I was going to say would be that, however, the, the commission does not find the three the proposed three story townhome development to be consistent with the potential historic mm -hmm. district. Of Frog Hall. Mm -hmm. And that there's a better solution that could be had. I think just yeah, saying it's no, not sure. consistent. No, <laughs> okay. So that would be the first that two opening open. comments. Right. Okay. Um, and, then w and then I have a whole list of other comments that you know we kind of went through so I'll go through those quickly and then these would be the subsequent comments to that so um, I guess sh I guess there should be a clarifying statement that says should the zoning board proceed with the application mm -hmm. the Commission request the following design modifications to the app to the proposal you know so the first would be to center um, uh, no to modify the the proposed um, balcony and sliding glass door and garage door to create a better alignment configuration on the rear facade um, the rear sliding glass door should be of a divided light configuration um, the dormers on the rear facade should be uh, larger um, and better better placed on the facade I didn't know if you wanted to just be right. larger well, they're and spacing centered, they're centered on, the, uh, on each unit okay so just larger just okay. larger okay but um, I think more, and, but you want to say larger with a with a to be somewhat uh, reflective of the gables on the western facade. Okay. In so scale, they have to be appropriately scaled with the gables. I, th I think, yeah. So you just say larger. That's amorphous. I, well, so. <laughs> I think what we'll do is we'll go through these design ones and then just as we did with 133 Forest Street there will be a final condition that the applicant will return to present a final plan to the Commission for Fair approval. enough. Okay. So, so then we can be a little bit more subjective to give right. suggestions in these comments. The next one would be um, that the entry overhang over the entry door should be narrowed and lowered to better relate to the door to the entry door. Um, I'm going to save that one. Uh, Brackets should be employed below the projection on the Valley Road facade. Under, um, under the uh, bay window. Under, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <coughs> and additional detailing and windows should be uh, incorporated along the Walnut Street facade to better relate to the adjacent okay. residential okay. properties. Wait, say that again, correctly. Additional windows and detailing should be incorporated on the Walnut Street facade to better relate to the adjacent Walnut Street residential properties. Mm -hmm. Brackets there. Um, and then yes, that's what the one comment that I had right. a little bit of right. variation on was. Um, I heard comments that a porch would be better than the overhang. I just wanted to see what the rest, what the full commission thought the, about. You mean the porch or a portico? Because we have a comment regarding the entry overhang, one, but then we also had a comment that it should be a porch instead of the overhang. So I want to, what, what's the consensus? I, I think it should be the overhang. Uh, I would disagree with that. Yeah, I would disagree. Because it's so odd to be entering right off this. There's no separation between the grade and coming in you feel like you're just well, there right there right it wouldn't be but because it's on grade you wouldn't have the opportunity to have a step up uh, yeah. you, you could have a step up of just blue you know I can imagine all sorts of scenarios okay. I would almost 
make it an entrance condition to separate but, it from But wouldn't it be more consistent with the entrances on Valley? Because aren't most of those on grade? Or yeah. They do? I, I, I just want to make a point. Does anyone know, can everyone picture driving up Bloomfield Avenue in Verona? There's a stretch right around Essex Fells as you're approaching Caldwell. Or on the left-hand side, there's townhouses. <laughs> Yeah. I want everyone to picture those townhouses, if you can. Okay. Well, they have steps up. I know they have steps up there, and they're brick. There's mon multiple variants, variations. However, I'll speak for myself. They're too close to the street. Mm -hmm. They're very sterile. They're completely out of line and inappropriate for that location. And it, to me, it speaks of very bad policy to have permitted those. I'm just going to say that as a statement. We have an opportunity right now to look at a project which potentially could have a similar type ex effect. I'm cautioning my colleagues to just be aware that that's something to use in the back of your mind. That's the type of project that you're looking at here. You're looking at exactly that kind of project. But I think we've addressed that in our opening two points. We said that in our opening two points. Okay. I just want to make sure that I use that as a reference because I think it's a very good reference to draw. And also just to note there are adjacent buildings that are consistently set back in that location. It's a little bit different. They're not as consistent. Mm -hmm. um, and so True, but those are commercial. So, I guess, so the this question is, is, I guess, to the commissioners, is it, are we, do we go with the porch route or the or overhang route? That's kind of where we're. Well, you could keep the the uh, port the that overhang if you if something were created in front of the door. What do you think, Caroline? I think it. Well, that was my suggestion. A porch of some sort. Mm -hmm. Porch yes. of some sort. Yeah. I think a porch. I would agree with that. A, por a porch for the entry. A porch or a portico, like a two columns and a some kind of pediment, or some kind of uh, porch. <coughs> Elevated. I mean, There's no windows on either maybe side. Maybe side lights. Maybe that would. That's a good suggestion. Side lights would be a great help. I was worried about s security. You know, I was mm -hmm. thinking of side lights. I was just thinking. Perhaps like we just leave it as a more general comment right. that says the entry should be redesigned to be a little bit more prominent on the Valley Road facade. Right. The more the open, units. less density. Just and just leave it at that right. and, yeah. and request yeah. that follow-up return condition. Yeah, leave it to me. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, let me just make a note of that. Back to and then we're going to add the condition that uh, requests the applicant return to present final plans. And then the um, our final condition that we always have, uh, return to present final finishes and materials, including with doors good? and what are, lights. What are the windows? Right. Are they aluminum? Do we know? Which well, that'll be part of the final finish review. Right. I just think it's important that the maybe we should talk about the window mullions, et cetera, and the construction. You know, we want to specify they should be true divided light. Mm -hmm. True mm -hmm. simulated divided light. Mm -hmm. True, divided true light. simulated divided light, which no, means no simulated divided. True light means each pane is separate. separate. No, I understand. Okay. And simulated is has it has the mullion on the outside of the glass and the spacer bar and then a bar on the inside. Right, right which is a simulated divided right, light. Right, so a simulated divided light. Just a clarification, you want a SDL GBG glass, grid between the glass, because they now do a SDL without the GBG. What does that mean? No, uh, the, uh, with, no, with, no, with the spacer bar in between. Yeah, that's what it is, the grill between the glass. Yeah. I mean, the, the, you want the spacer bar between the glass. Yes, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, just that's the clarification. Yeah. That's simulated the bottom yeah. light. It, but but now, now she's saying they, they do it slightly Now different. they have two different options, so you want to make it. sure that you've got the grill between the, okay. you've got the, the right. spacer bar between right. the glass. Right, there's a grill okay. between the glass. Be in between the glass or outside the glass? Both glass. Right. Yeah, I think I, yeah. Right. yeah, so and I think I think that that windows. can all be encapsulated in the, the applicant will return for final review and presentation of windows, doors, lighting, okay. all those elements. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. May I just ask, do you like the grills on the top and the bottom? I'm sorry, the do you like the grills on the I only put them at the top. Do you prefer a top and bottom? I think it's okay. You know, okay. The, what the grills in the windows, I have them in the top sash, the bottom yeah, the sash, I have no grills. That's more of an arts and crafts. I think that's fine. It doesn't That's bother right. me. But if you're going to do those kind of windows, um, I would like to see, instead of the stucco on the bottom, I would like, I wouldn't mind seeing 
not cultured stone. Well, like Robinson Rock, you know, the, the, the actual natural stone. Yeah, well, they make, the culture stone is, you know, is made from concrete and... No, yeah, I know, but... But I they make real... That's what I'm talking stone. about. Yeah. Thin Which stone. Which is similar, same price as the other one. Right. I, I prefer to see the stucco. You yeah. prefer yeah. stucco? Yeah. yeah. Right, as long as there's... I, I'd like to see, make sure landscape covers a, a good portion of it. Well, we did... Oh, did you... Put, did you... Yeah, uh, is that one is a part of the review. Yeah. Landscaping is part of the A lot of it is covered because he has boxwoods, hedges, like, and it blocks right. pretty much all of it, like I showed. What right. Graham, what about the um, the hip roof um, between the gables? I did, I did not hear consensus on that point. So I don't well, the reason, let me just say this. What I was trying to suggest... I'll just know that we do have three other applications. No, yes. I understand. I'm just going to say this very quick. The reason I suggested that was to pretty much address what I think Caroline and I both take a front to which is the fact that it seems like a a um, multi, it's a, what do you want to call it, a, a what did you house. call it? Townhouse. A townhouse. By changing, by, by breaking the roof line up between the two, between the gables, you kind of create more of a separation and make more like townhouses versus, what did you call it? Versus? An extrusion, this really reaches an extrusion right now. I thought it was <coughs> Oh, townhouse. Well, it creates more like individual townhouses as opposed to one long, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, that was a that was a means to address our our shared concern. Um, does, who else feels that way? I don't. Th I think that the facade that you see it is going to be, um, as I expressed before, that you really won't see. It. I think the the main concern f is that uh, Walnut Street facade, which seems very plain, and. Um, Almost like an outbuilding. They're two. They're two separate concerns. I agree with you, a hundred percent, on the Walnut Street side. By the way, um, did you consider too on the sides of the buildings? A um, is there any kind of pilaster or any kind of coin, anything along the edging, yeah. where the where the pieces meet, where the corners meet? Right now, I just have two boards. The corners meet. What do you think of making fluted corners? No, I'm just going to paint the corners. Sometimes it gets too big, the corners. I feel like panels. I, okay. think, I, think we, I think we've got our we'll recommendations, and um, yeah. we are ready to go forward. As no. Yeah. Uh -huh. So just to, this application is tentatively scheduled for no. the September oh, zoning board meeting. I know, so I know. Looking a little full, the, the applicant is going to decide if they want to go try to be late in the evening on September or move to October. So that's September 18th, Greg? Currently, yes, but we have five applications in front of them that are September okay. 18th, so I don't know if we'll get that's to that. Okay. Yeah. So right. just a go. projection. Yes, I, I won't be here. No, I meant. Uh, I know it quite. Uh, gentlemen, we're still speaking. We have um, a volunteer to go to the September 18th zoning board. I'm not in town, so I can't do that. Yeah, and neither am I. What else is being heard that night? Is that the St. Luke's Church application that we saw previously? Nothing else. Oh well, the zoning board has other applications, but that pertain to us. Yeah, the only other one that was subject to HBC review is the St. Luke's application that evening. All right, so nobody, nobody is mm -hmm. volunteering now. Maybe we can send out another. And just to advise, there's a high, high, probability high probability that this that will this not be heard. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we have nobody. All By right. the way, just to correct, I didn't mean coins. I meant a pilaster on the corner to break up the, uh, the okay. Uh, okay. corners. Okay. All right. Well, thank, thank you. you. I think we're okay. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. Okay. If I could just have a set of the plans. Thank you. That I oh, set of what? A plant for plants. Correct. I found the web list. Here. I just need a print. This is Our next, our, next our next application is a referral from the Board of Adjustment, application 2643, 10 Alexander Avenue. It's a bulk variance for, for an addition to dwelling in the R1 one family zone. Fairway, Squire Hill, Yantica, potential historic resource area. And um, if everyone has.
Okay, the project description is the applicant proposes to construct a new addition to the side of the dwelling. The proposed addition will include a two-car garage on the first level and a new bedroom with full bathroom on the second level. Proposed addition will extend about 40.5 feet in width from the existing dwelling, which is 24 feet in width. The addition will have a depth of about 24 feet. Uh, and the um, historic content is that the subject property is located in a potential historic area, the Fair, Fairway Squire Hill Yentica. Um, the fair, that area was built between 1950 and 1959 and consists of single one-family houses with varying dates of construction, scale, lot styles, and architectural styles. Tourist Park is also located in the center of the area. Um, this originally was the location of Upper Mar Montclair Golf Club. The area was redeveloped in the 1950s and Heller Way was cut through at that time. Uh, this applicant requests a variance of the maximum prevented prevent maximum permitted width of a principal structure to permit a width greater than 65 percent of the lot frontage the applicant proposes a building width of 73.7 of the front of the lot frontage the existing building on the subject lot has a width of 24 feet 2 inches which is 29 percent of the lot frontage the proposed addition will increase the width of the dwelling by 40.4 feet to about 64.6 feet um, and I think that's all the information. Um, everybody has a set of plans. Okay, so you, could you introduce yourself and tell us who you are in relation to the project? Um, my name is Jeffrey Bird. I'm the architect and son of the owner. Okay, can I uh, swear you in? Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth in terms of this? I do. Okay, and are you are you a licensed architect? I am a licensed architect. Uh, with a license in New Jersey? Yes. Okay, all right. So, um, do you want to run us, uh, take us through your project? Do you have uh, m something you can put on the board or? No, I'll primarily go off of the plan submitted okay. if that's okay with the commissioners. Um, the project is an addition to a uh, two and a half story home. Uh, the primary goal of the project is to minimize, is to add all the programmatic elements you just described um, while minimizing the disruption to the eastern facade of the house. Um, that way we don't have a ton of interruption for the rooms there. Uh, there's a bay window along that side. So we're holding the garage off a healthy distance off of the house. Um, it's basically to provide a number of programmatic elements that um, the owners um, need as they're aging to kind of make the house useful going forward. Uh, the primary design objective of the job was to, as I previously mentioned, keep the facade, um, keep the work done along that side of the house and the structure minimal and keep uh, the roof structure as low as possible while fitting in the programmatic elements. Um, and then, so that, that's roughly the description. Um, the neighborhood's kind of a mixture of uh, post-war kind of housing types. This is a farmhouse built um, like early 1900s. Mm -hmm. um, and then would you like me to go point by point uh, I just received the um, the historical architect's report. Would you like me to go point by point down it, or? Well, did you did you um, change anything in your application that relates to the comments, or? Uh, I have not had time no, to do that. Oh, yeah. Just to note, the report was received on Monday, so it was shared oh, okay. with the applicant just Monday of this week. All right. So, do you want to? Uh, so, um, maybe you we you have there are four uh, comments here. Uh, that maybe you can address now that mm -hmm. with your uh, existing plan the first one being the new entry door to the second floor should be subordinate to the first floor door the sorry sorry the, <laughs> the wrong one okay sorry 
No, there's 10 comments. Okay. So the first one is the garage addition should be subordinate to the existing house. It should not compete in sales scale or design. Um, sure. Um, so the, the house, it, it is slightly less. Um, I'm constantly revising, um, putting it on a diet. Although with the program that we're proposing, we feel um, that is uh, what, what we can get. Okay. Uh, well, I, I have a question on that front. Um, oh, well, I mean, we're addressing a comment, we're so right. um, you know, wh what what is behind the two and a half story frame? It says one story. Was that an addition, a previous addition? Yes, that was an addition to my knowledge done post war. Okay. Um, and you know, I if you you know, you wanted to preserve that bay window. Um, was there any thought into shifting this proposed addition back and connecting it to the prior addition? I think that would address those concerns about uh, subordinating the, the garage addition. Yes, there's a, a kitchen along mm -hmm. that addition right now mm -hmm. uh, it would require substantial oh so that's what that is that's of the kitchen, kitchen and then yes. you're showing like the the counter that's the counter yes okay we're, we're um attempting to use a, an existing window as the header mm -hmm. um, that way our structural works minimal All right, well, considering that you haven't had a chance to really digest all of these um, these 10 points, maybe what we should do, um, because we've received them, maybe we should go to questions now. Well, yeah. And then, so, Mr. Remitz, do you have a, any questions? Um, what is, when I'm looking at the site plan here, right next to where it says one story, what is CE? That is a um, storm cellar door. And you're removing, it's hard for me to read, you're removing quite a bit of asphalt in the back, right? All the way, it goes all the way back to the back shed. Correct. So that's not really backyard space now, it's all sort of driveway space, right? Yes, you are correct. Don't have any other questions. Mr. So following up with uh, my colleague Jason um, next to me, um, uh, I understand why you didn't put the garage um, adjacent to the, the addition, which is where the kitchen is. But my question is, I know that there's a deck off the kitchen. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. I mean, couldn't it be, um, cons wouldn't it be a possibility to put the garage f running in a perpendicular direction in terms of the cars where the deck is now and maybe put a, do some kind of, I, obviously, that, then you enter from the garage into the kitchen and then the, the garage itself, instead of facing Alexander, which is the public right away, it's hidden, it's a little more discreet, and it's still contiguous with the kitchen. So people, you know, you walk out of the garage and into the kitchen. Is that a pot, something you considered? Uh, it was not something we considered, no. Any particular reason why? Mainly just to <coughs> preserve the use of that kitchen. Um, no, but you can still use the kitchen. Well, I'm not saying replace the kitchen. I'm saying to have the garage, when you pull in, you, you, you dog leg to the right and you pull in. Where the deck is now, that's where the car would pull in there. You know, two cars would pull in. So you just el eliminate the deck. Right, you, you'd eliminate the deck. Or you could even... I think, I think yeah, what we're is that um, we're not that... Um, 
enthusiastic about having a garage door, a new garage door facing the public right away. So trying to f figure out, and it's certainly not our job to design your project, but figuring out a, an alternative where the garage doors would not be facing the front of the building. Plus, and plus it would be conforming. If you look at the plan, it would be in within the allowable building area. See, the present plan that they're proposing extends beyond the allowable building area. This would now be in conformance with the allowable building area. And I think from a circulation point of view, it makes a lot of sense. Plus, I mean, if I may say so, you have this bay window which is facing east, which you've now obscured, and you've made into this kind of dead end. Now, this is more <laughs> of a judgment issue, but I kind of think it would be better to have that where you get the exposure of the sun, et cetera, into the bay window rather than looking at your garage. I'm just, I'm, yeah. so. Oh, I understand. The suggestion I'm making, number one, conforms, you wouldn't require a variance because it would be within the allowable building area with roughly, if not exactly. And then the second thing is it would be less uh, 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 invasive on the public right away. And one of the beautiful things about that particular street, Alexander, especially where you are, this particular site, is it's a very bucolic stretch. It's almost like a country road. I happen to have grown up right around the corner, so I'm very connected to it. And it just seems to me to put the garage back there would solve the needs of your aging parents in terms of need of access, and then perhaps build the deck off on the eastern side if you needed to have the deck. That's just my own personal editorial. But that would be my thought process. I'd like. Any, have you given any thought to any of that? Uh, no, not in the rear yard, no. Do you have any reservations to doing that? Um, <clears throat> my, my only reservations to that are, is um, just how much work we do to the existing house. Um, I don't know if it would add any more additional work than what you're already proposing. In fact, you could even have the garage, although you want to keep an interior walk the passageway between the garage and the house, Right? You want to walk from the garage to cross the deck into the house. It, yes, you are correct. So all I'm, su I, all I'm suggesting is if you put it where the deck is, okay, and if I'm not mistaken, I'm, again, I'm, I'm overreaching here, but the deck is facing, well, south, I guess. It is south. So but if you maybe built something off of the kitchen on the eastern sides, you know, or off the, you know, off the corner, that might be a good solution. That's my comment, my suggestion. Okay. okay. Um, or my question. <laughs> Mr. Hyman, do you have a question? No. Um, I have a question. Did you consult the historic design guidelines before you designed this? No, I was not aware of those. Oh, okay. Um, because I think that's one of the things that um, you would see that we have we have it written out about uh, addition and outbuildings and being subordinate to the existing building. In fact, it's on page 150. So um, that's something that we all should consider uh, what, you know, with our comments that we're making for, the, for this project. Do you have any other comments? Um, questions. 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 <laughs> questions. <laughs> questions? No questions. No questions. No questions. Okay, so now, mm. being that you haven't had a chance to really um, go over this, um, maybe you'll take this away, uh, or do you want to? Can we make comments now? Yeah, well, wait, wait. I'm just let's just go through this. Okay. Um, yes. Um, so essentially, half the points are really graphical considerations, and I'm more than happy to provide that. Um, some of the larger kind of I guess items one through three mm -hmm. and I would also add six to that um, or some more kind of grand design issues which might take some more time but um, yeah I, I would think they would be redesign issues actually mm -hmm. that was okay so um, but y you have this in hand so I do okay great so now we'll have comments okay I think this garage addition, garage, laundry, powder room, 
bedroom upstairs that you have to go upstairs is in the totally wrong location on this site and should not be at the front of the house and there are many different possible solutions to pull this off the front of the house it's just totally in the wrong area that's my only comment okay do you have another comment mr grima yeah, I concur. I mean, that's consistent with what I'm saying. I, I think that the um, in agreement um, with Mr. Reimnitz, I think the garage should be, and as, as I suggested, uh, in the rear of the house, and that um, um, that's my strong position. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Just it's, it shouldn't be on the front facades. It has to be stepped back. And I agree. I agree as well. So you can turn the garage around, but you, the problem is the size of the, of the building itself. It's too, it's not subordinate to the existing. Right, which is what, with the design you have now, it should be. Yeah, may, maybe uh, along those lines, you might want to hit the roof, although I, I, if you there is a the second story. What's that? You can turn the roof the other direction. Yeah. But it still needs to come down. It still needs to be subordinate. It makes the existing building look small. Well, if it's in the back of the house, would you feel the same way? Well, you're asking him to redesign his entire kitchen. Not necessarily. No, it's all glass. No. It's all glass. Not necessarily. No, no. It's all glass on the south side. And you take away the deck. You can no glass. You could make the connection, this laundry pottery connection, in the corner of that. I guess that's a family room off of the kitchen, I guess. Same. And make that the connection to a larger garage. Which side are you talking about? So you're cutting, you're cutting into Sunday. the deck. You're cutting into the back you're, part of the deck. You're saying it's all glass, right? It's all glass. I'm assuming you're, you're talking about the family room off of the kitchen. Well, they're dining room, the whatever guy. it is, yeah. Is that a family room? Or yes, that's a family, family room. So all I'm saying is they could make the connection, the powder room, in that corner. You don't need to take the whole facade out to make that same sort of discrete connection there and connect to a larger garage in the back. I just think there are solutions. I don't, again, I don't think we should be just... No. Designing, designing things, right. but I think there are solutions a lot better than lining it all across the front of the house. Okay. Any other comments? Mm -hmm. So I, th I think based on that, it sounds like Mr. Connolly's comments are pretty much what we should be forwarding to the zoning board. To the zoning yeah. board. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did he agree? Or his? Mr. Connolly's first comment is the garage addition should be subordinate copy? to the existing house. Right, should right. not compete in size, scale, or design. Right, right. Okay. So these, this will now go to the zoning board with, with these comments. And it would be up to you to, you know, take our comments and, and come up with a, a you know, design where you're actually going to put the um, garage and the hyphen. Oh, but does you don't you wouldn't even need a hyphen then? But you would still, if you think about it, you'd still have the um, the bay window and the and that beautiful view. So I think that's the other thing because I looked at this and thought that you were creating a, a well there. That yes. It's not. It, it's just totally dead space. I mean, you're keeping the window, but just totally blocking mm -hmm. the view off. And the light. And the east, that eastern light, that morning light. Mm -hmm. So. So, um, so we'll send over the 10 comments from Mr. Collins' memo as part of the commission's report to the Yeah, and just in terms of the preamble, just our, our sentiment that uh, having um, uh, the placement at the front facade wasn't consistent. Yeah, so that's item three of Mr. Collins' oh, okay. memo. Yeah. Uh, the re residential re rehabilitation guidelines state that outbuildings should be located appropriately, such as to the rear set back from the front elevation. Okay. Okay, so that's okay. Yeah, I would make that number one. And actually, I would I would um, say the town sh the uh, design, guidelines design guidelines and and mm -hmm. and uh, reference page one fifty because mm -hmm. that's where it comes from. Montclair's historic design guidelines that were yep. 
when was that done? Well, are you going to mention that we suggested right. that the the garage be sited in the rear of the house, or is that no? No, because that's up to that's designing that's up to projects. Right. Okay. 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 All right. okay. I just want to say one other quick thing for your interest. Um, this is a little off the record. If you have a chance, then, then let's well, then no. let's no, no, no. Then no. let's not address it. It's not okay. about the project. It's about the location of the house. Then let's not address. I could leave you my point. card if that okay. would. Okay. If that's of your interest. Yeah, they're just. Yeah. See. No. Okay, let's move okay. on. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, our next application is a referral from the Board of Adjustment, application 2644 325 Claremont Avenue, Montclair Town Center, LLC. This is the amended site plan approval for the installation of a freestanding sign and plaque sign at the Carriage House in the R3 Garden Zone apartment zone. This is the Georgian Inn, which is an individual uh, landmark, and um, we are now on Claremont Avenue with this, correct? So, oh boy, there's four. <laughs> Where do you go? Oh, great. Okay, so can you introduce yourselves? But you. Um, relationship yeah. is and yes Kevin Costello um, applicant uh, we've also brought so this is kind of two different signs a, a freestanding oh, monument yeah. but before you before you start testifying yeah, testifying sure. if everyone could just introduce yourself yeah, I'm sorry, for I'm the record I'll lead into that who, who okay. these guys are um, so we're the applicant on owners of the building um, we allow our tenants to our tenants do all their own signage and hi hire their own signage companies so the first floor tenant um, wanted to propose a, a building mounted sign and so they hired a sign company to do that so we just combined the application since we are coming in for the monument sign anyways okay and could you introduce absolutely so my name is carolina Hinao, and we are the sign company for one of the tenants okay my name is julian ospina i'm the project manager for the sign company for the sign company yes okay could you each just spell your last name so i get them Mine yes. is H E N A O. Okay, thank you. Your last, last name? name? O S P I N A. Okay, thank you. Okay, and um, as we all know, do you uh, oh, sorry, all swear ahead. and affirm that the testimony that you're going to give to this commission will be truthful and accurate? We do. Yeah. Thank you. I'm just looking for. Let's see if Thomas memo or no, this. So what we're looking at, the project description, is that the applicant proposes to install a freestanding sign in the front yard of the carriage house. The proposed freestanding sign will be six feet in height, about six feet in width. The sign panel on the freestanding side will be four feet, three inches in width, and two feet, 11 inches in height, a total of 11.66 square feet. The sign panel will contain four uh, small areas for each tenant. The applicant also proposes two building mount mounted plaque signs. One plaque sign is to be installed to the left of the front door and one plaque sign is to be installed to the left of the rear entry door. Each plaque sign is to be 42 inches in height and 36 inches in width, a total of 8.75 inches. To correct, it's 30 inches in width, not 36. Oh, was that, did I read it wrong? Oh, 30 inches 30, in width. not 36. Right. And so what we have to consider is um, you are requesting a C variance, relief from uh, Montclair Code 347-109. The applicant requests variance relief for the installation of the freestanding sign and two plaque signs. Neither the freestanding sign nor the plaque sign are permitted installation in the residential zone district. Um, and then we have the... Uh, Planning considerations, the proposed freestanding sign will have a three inch setback from the front property line. Um, which I did um, no. Three inch setback, that's what it says here. Is that a typo? Wait a minute. Hold on. And then free standing signs are permitted in non residential. Oh, no, three inches. Yeah, that's correct. Three inches. Not three inches. inches. Okay. Free standing signs are permitted in non residential zone districts under uh, Montclair Code 347 110 .3. It must be set back from property lines at least five feet. In addition, the maximum 
permitted sign area is 12 square feet and the maximum permitted height is 6 feet. Plaque signs are permitted in non-residential zone districts. Under this code section, plaque signs may not exceed 4 square feet in size. In addition, plaque signs are not to be mounted lower than 4 feet above grade or higher than 7 feet above grade. So to, can you tell us where the... Uh, if you want, I can just clarify my inclusion of those planning considerations. Mm -hmm. Sure. Why? Um, so the um, proposed freestanding sign that the applicant has submitted is setback three inches from the front property line, whereas where these signs are permitted, the required setback is five feet. So just wanted to note that for the board as they consider the, the placement and location of the sign. The proposed sign area uh, does comply with the requirements for freestanding signs. They're proposing an 11.66 square foot sign and uh, 12 square foot is the max. The, this sign is also proposed to be uh, six feet in height, I guess. Yes, yeah, six feet in height, which complies with the requirements for freestanding signs as well. Um, the proposed plaque signs are larger than uh, the permitted size of plaque signs where they are permitted. Four square feet is the maximum permitted. And the proposed plaque signs here under this application are 8.75 square feet. So I just wanted to include those planning considerations to, to note that these types of signs are permitted and these are those are the requirements right. for So um, when you say here um, a total of 8.75 square feet, mm -hmm. is that per sign? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's per sign. Mm -hmm. So you, they're, they're requesting uh, more, uh, doubling, more than double. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. <coughs> um, yeah, so I'm, you know, my testimony will um, really focus on the freestanding sign. Um, as far as location and setbacks, you know, I, I kind of defer to the board. We, we kind of placed it, we walked the site, I think we even walked <coughs> there, looked at this briefly with the um, revisions committee about where it was, we thought it was appropriate to go. Um, it feels like that's where the sign goes, um, but if you want to make it in compliance with the other zones that allow freestanding signs, you know, we would be okay with moving it back to the five feet. Um, as far as uh, materials in the, in the sign design itself, um, we've been doing kind of similar signs to this at some other locations, um, both here and at another <coughs> property in Verona. Um, you know, we're proposing uh, the design itself um, have a backing of Valkermat um, material here in this color, um, and then we put these uh, clear anodized aluminum plates with offsets in front of them, and then have kind of a vinyl um, printed lettering for the each individual tenant. Um, the I have some photos down there. We can actually put it up on the board, but um, it's a similar but not identical sign that we've done in town. Um, with the uh, simulated, you know, I beams that we're proposing, with the um, clear anodized aluminum sign panels, with the, the vinyl printed lettering, um, it's just the posts we're proposing are precast uh, concrete posts instead of the wooden ones shown in these photos. Um, the clear anodized, uh, you know, individual letters that are proposed uh, on our sign are the same. It just doesn't have the big address number at the top, you know, like it's in the photo. Uh, but what are the posts? Can you describe what the posts will be? So we proposed um, eight inch precast um, concrete posts, um, whereas those are wooden posts in the photo. Right. Okay. Um, and then can you speak to the, are you going to speak to the plaque signs? Yeah, absolutely. So we will be providing the plaque signs for one of the tenants for uh, physical therapy. One of the reasons why we thought it was important that it was a little bit bigger was mainly because of the type of um, patients that they see. It has to be a little bit more visible for easier access or easier vi visibility when they're driving. So it's very important to, for them to see a sign, especially when they have to go to a back door. We want to make sure that they can read the sign before they even make it to the top of the, you know, of the door because they will have to use the front, um, another door to access the building. So we figure uh, a very small sign might not do the justice that we're looking for for the disability purpose for the patients. And that was the reason why we... Do you have any pictures of that? Because there are signs up there now. Yeah, it's right um, behind all of those. And we made sure that we went for uh, materials that were kind of you know, went well with the building as well. And colors, we, originally the colors of our client are actually very colorful. They're like a bunch of shades of blue. Oh. But we figured that that wasn't going to look good with the actual historical building as it is now. So we went for something very standard, which is black. And we did a, a metal, you know, plaque behind it. 
and and the the uh, size though is is double the permitted s size. So in terms of that board, mm -hmm. how how much larger is it than that board? How much? Like, well, the, the mock-up itself on the building, I don't know if you guys um, had the application with I you. I think the chair is asking with respect to the size of the foam core board. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I am so sorry. Um, so it is going to be 30. So we can actually do it better with... If it's more or less the size of the board. Yeah, more a little less. bit. So is it 24, 24, 36? It's, it's, it's going to be 30 inches. Well, that's oh. going to be... A, that's a 24, 36, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit... Um, shorter on the width, but it's okay. a little bit longer on the height. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So it's a little bit like average. And, and you're the material that you're proposing again? Yes. Do you want me to bring that to you? Oh, me? sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, why don't you start on that side? I guess we'll have. And what did you say? You called the signs that are on the wall already a mock up, or is that the actual sign that you installed prior to getting the permit? Oh, no, no, we haven't installed no, anything. Oh, so. We did put a temporary sign up because nobody could find them. Oh. We, it's not like attached to the building. We just yeah, ours is not you know done yet. So. Um. Yes. If you've looked at it, why don't you? This is twenty-four by thirty-six. Your sign is thirty by forty-two. Mm -hmm. So it's six inches wider than this and six inches No, it's six yeah. inches shorter. Um, it's it's six inches wider, wider and six inches higher. Yes. Oh, what sorry. oh that's 24 by 36. So it's wider than this and longer than this. Correct. Yes. just want you to understand what you're looking at. Okay. Um, I don't have any other questions. <laughs> questions um, the only question I have is did you can did you have any consideration for the the aesthetic of the building uh, did, was that did that come into play at all and your selection of materials on the design um, we had two options one was going to be a copper with the black lettering the issue why we didn't go with that one is because the copper kind of resembles a lot the color of the building itself, so it was going to more like blend in and maybe not even... Why two options, only two options? Because we were looking for the history and the ordinance and they were very specific on metals itself. Like, you know, like in the area they were... What other materials... You could use wood. You could use. Um, it could have the appearance of wood <laughs> using a. Uh, what is it? Aztec? Not Aztec. Uh, Aztec. Azac material. There's there's ways to kind of. This is a, a Georgian style historical building, and the sign that you're showing us is a very cold, kind of contemporary. Um, I don't know. It just doesn't seem to. I'm not going to comment. I'm asking you if you considered other materials. But here's the thing, we're super open to any materials that you guys uh, will suggest, because ultimately our client just wants to have a sign on the building that their patients can find the location easily. But any materials that you guys suggest, we're, he's willing to go with it, so. Yeah. Okay, questions? No. I have a question, Kevin. Um, in the, in the uh, uh, you're proposing that the your sign is three inches setback from the from the sidewalk property line. from the property line um, so th but that's very close to the, to the street why did why did you put it so close um, can I, can you just hand me that that, that's the property line is about six feet back from the sidewalk the outside edge of the sidewalk if you, if you look at the site plan it's about the line here and yeah, so it's, there's a large there's right of way along Claremont Avenue. So oh, there's a large right of way. Right. Okay, so so it's a little over six feet back from the, the yeah, sidewalk. When when we were on site, we kind of talked to signage real quickly, um, right. and we kind of pointed. We kind of tried to match that, but because the setback is so large on Claremont, you know, we're very close to the setback, but we're still very far from the street. Okay, I'm sorry. For, uh, with that <laughs> sign, it looked like it was close to the sidewalk. That's why I didn't under I didn't fully understand that. I think you said, Graham, it, it's six feet from the sidewalk? Is roughly, that? Yeah. I scaled it out. It's roughly about six feet. Okay. 
Oh, we'll then give that, you a little that, less. Yeah, I didn't. I just wanted your rationale because that's such an open street that I didn't know why you needed it right on the on the sidewalk. And then um, my only question about your sign is that um, how visible will that be? Uh, is there going to be any illumination on it? Um, you mean the, the freestanding or the? No, I'm sorry, the the flat sign. Uh, so far, we did not include any illumination. The building itself. Are you guys adding any lamps to the building? Yeah, the fixtures that, that were previously reviewed. I think there is a reviewed. light. Yeah, the, the, they've been in, you know, approved and installed. There's a fixture just above, if you look at the front elevation, there's a fixture just above the... The, the drawn the elevation is, looks correct. The rendering doesn't show the right fixture. Okay. Oh. Right, that photo was taken before they got put up. Yeah. So okay. yeah, so our sign would be elevation. pretty much illuminated by that spotlight that is already on the building. Okay. And um, the freestanding sign, the materials are the same as the plaque sign? Or no, no. no. Um, no it's, it's these materials. I don't know if you... Uh, they seem similar. No? They're similar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we'll take samples to pass around. But um, clear anodized with vinyl lettering. It's black instead of this gray. And then we've been using this B-Rock material. Okay. So it's a, a similar palette. So similar to here, yeah. <laughs> Any more camera? Steve. Question. It's that one's Valkermat, <laughs> John. That's Valkermat, but it's almost <laughs> the same thing as Virag. I think I probably said it wrong, but what is it used for generally? The signage? Uh People use it in facade systems a lot. We use it interior on, you know, we use it as like a, almost a wainscoting in a lot of places. It's like a cement, it's wood based, <coughs> but it's a cement board. Wood based cement board? Yeah. So it's got like wood fiber in it and cement. Okay. Um, time for comments. Okay. Um, Just make sure your microphone is. I think the uh, freestanding sign on the street, um, I like the fact that you're using the concrete, the sort of, it, it looks like uh, the old hitching post that right, you see around Montclair. Right, the street sign right. So I think that is, it, that's great. I, I have no problem with that at all. The sport, the thing up on the wall, I think it's just, when I look at how big this is and it's even bigger, I think it's just too large. Those are my comments. Uh, I, I would agree uh, in terms of the scale, uh, with John, um, and I think also that you really, I think a white sign of, you know, in a wood or azac type material create the perception of something. Even if, does that material come in, a, in a other colors? Sure. Yeah. So I'm just saying more of a wood sign, like, uh, like a, uh, uh, like almost like a, um, uh, just hanging off of a, a something just a little more light and would be really nice and more tasteful. And I also think a white sign would draw more attention uh, to the uh, tenant business uh, with dark lettering, you know, you, or even colored lettering on on the on the white surface or off white, something light. Okay. Can I just make? I'm sorry. Back up one more comment. Sure. When you go, when we get to, when you get to applying this sign on the brick facade, if you could just hold the sign off of the brick facade, either with some spacer or something, so you're not just applying it right to the facade. And also mount it to the to the um, the concrete joints, as opposed to the actual brick. Yes, this one has a separation from the actual facade of three eighths. The separation between the sign and the facade. Okay. Would you like more separation than that? No, I, that, it's just really just to allow for drainage yes. and not deterioration oh, yeah. of the brick. And if you mount through the mortar joints, you're not, not damaging Kevin's great building there. So mm -hmm. that's correct. Um, now, are you saying yeah. like little brackets yeah. are going to make the sign to be a little bit off from okay. the wall? Okay. Yeah, I agree. Uh, just in terms of uh, comments about size, it should be scaled down. I think. Um, you consider a different material um, and also just the spacing of the lettering and the, the logo uh, even it out a little bit just because it, it just seems crowded 
um, and if, if visibility is, is a concern, um, provide a little bit more vertical spacing. Um, I <laughs> the um, the size. I'm, I don't have a picture of what's already up between the door. Oh, I don't know if that's is that a photograph this? of the mock-up or yes. what you already have? Up? Is that is that about the practice? Is that the size? Yes. That would be the exact size that would look on the building. Oh, okay. So there's um, there's some um, border on a brick on on either side. Um, I don't mind the material because I think on this building you've got the um, especially on the back you've got that metal <coughs> overhang, and you've got the metal with the staircase, and of course you've got the black windows. <laughs> You that love those black windows, don't that's you? That's that's uh, that it goes ties in with with it. So, I really like the freestanding sign, and actually, I think that sign, the flat one, as long as it's mounted away from the building, and I was just concerned about um, how the illumination, because I don't know how readable it would be at night. Is this building open at night, especially on the front? I understand <coughs> on the back. Th there's a light fixture. There is a light there. fixture on the front. Mm -hmm. Then I don't have a concern. I think it'll be fine. Yeah, I believe they close normally like around seven. So right. they're not really open that late. So. Okay. So the winter. Yeah, the winter. It'll be dark at yeah, four. Yeah, winter is at four. <laughs> so. Um, I I agree with John. I think it's a little too big. It should just be scaled down a little bit. But in terms of materials, I think it relates to the mm. freestanding sign, and I think that's important that there's some sort of coherence between the sign, so I would recommend this as the ma the materials. I, I'd ag agree with the freestanding sign. I think the size needs to be smaller, but the reason that you're putting this on the front because you want to tell them that the entrance is in the rear, but you can't see that from this from the street. I can't see that from this picture. Not so much from the street, but as they're approaching the building itself, they will be able to see um, that the entrance is on the rear. That's my point. It's just, I don't know if it's legible in time. <laughs> By the time you get oh, there, you get clear up there in the hall. <coughs> entrance is in the rear. Well, they have to. I, I, just, I just have a question regarding the size. Uh, will the tenant that, that's doing the plaque sign also have a sign on the freestanding sign? Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's just something to consider with respect to the size of the sign on the building. They'll also have this, a sign on the freestanding yeah. sign. So, mm -hmm. so something for the commission to consider. So uh, then I have a question. Are people coming to you by walking or are they coming by car? Yeah. Mostly by that car, I imagine. I'm assuming it will be by car, and I, I think they also... So I, they will I don't think by walking. Okay, so they're not going to park on... Uh, Claremont, and they're not going to park on, they're going to pull around to the back of the building, and you're going to have an entrance sign there, right? Correct. Okay. That's so if we're talking about scaling it back, that piece of uh, board that you have there, that's 36 by 24, um, can, I mean, that size, turn it on rectangular, that size. I'm just saying scale at least to that, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. 20, right. Right. Yeah, that'll be okay. So um, then we are in agreement about the um, free the uh, freestanding sign, mm -hmm. the placement of the freestanding sign, mm -hmm. and just in agreement about the materials for both, but to uh, make it a bit smaller, twenty four by thirty six on yeah, um, so both I front yeah, and back. So I have three conditions, I guess. One was um, so reduce the size of the plaque sign to twenty four by thirty six mortar joint insulation for the uh, plaque sign and also uh, to set the plaque sign off the building uh, to allow, you know, room behind the sign. So okay. just those three conditions, I think. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. And then do we have to say anything about um, the I position, the placement of the freestanding? It might be helpful if you want to put in a comment regarding the, the setback of the freestanding sign. I don't know if you're, if you're okay with the placement of the sign or support. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Have a great night. Right. <coughs> okay. Our next is a referral from the Board of Adjustment, application 2646 11 Oxford Street. 
Uh, Mingi Lee, it's a bulk variance for third story addition to an existing two family dwelling in the R2 family zone. And this is the Tremont Potential Historic District. And let me just get some these papers. Okay, the uh, applicant proposes to construct new additions to the existing dwelling. Uh, the applicant proposed an addition to the east side of the building of the dwelling. The proposed addition will be 10 feet in width and 52, 8 inches in length, with an additional 8 feet in length to extend the existing front porch. Um, as each unit will have additional, uh, uh, the applicant also proposes a third story addition to accommodate the third bedroom. The applicant proposes a rear addition to enclose a stair at the rear of the building. This will provide a second means of egress from both. And the Tremont Place um, Potential Historic District um, is, was primarily developed between 1900 and 1929 by Louise and Otto Hink, children of H Christopher Hink, who developed the Christopher Street area. Area consists of single family homes built in Dutch colonial revival style. Um, according to the uh, tax, township tax assessment reco records, the building that is on the property was constructed in 1905, and that's the building we'll be looking at now. And um, subject proper property, as I said, is in the R2 family, uh, two family zone district, required minimum lot width is 60 feet, and the subject property has a width lot of 50 feet. Application, the applicant is requesting various relief from the following sections of the Montclair Code. Applicant requests C variance relief from. So it's a, it's a, a variance of maximum number of stories in the zone. Applicant proposes three stories where a maximum of two and a half stories is permitted. Um, the applicant requests a variance of the required minimum front yard setback of 20 five feet. Existing dwelling has a front yard set out of 21 feet to the front porch. The, pr the applicant proposes to extend the yard, the port, front porch eastward in line with the existing front porch. Proposed front yard setback from the new addition of the porch will be 21 feet. And the third variance is um, required minimum side yard setback of six feet. Applicant proposes to reconfigure and enclose an existing open stair to create an interior stair. The existing open stair has a side yard setback of 1.2 feet, and the proposed side yard setback will also be 1.2 feet. So I think we've covered the store content and all the variances. So now could you each identify yourselves and tell us who you are in relationship to the property? Uh, I'm Wen Tao Fang. I'm the owner. Okay. Uh, my name is Mindy Lee. Uh, I'm the owner and the applicant. I'm John Machek. I'm the architect. Thank you. Um, so if you could all raise your, you raise your right hands to swear to tell the truth and everything concerning this application. Yes. Say yes. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. So, Mr. Monchak, if you could uh, walk us through briefly because it's now 1010. <laughs> sure. And um, you know it's a big project. Yeah, it, uh, it is. Um, and... Um, so I'm going to just start by saying that the clients came to me um, excited to buy a new house in Montclair, um, to become part of the neighborhood and to make this house their home. They purchased um, this property in a fairly homely condition with um, large um, Um, of course, you start taking a house like this, um, 
kind of take a look, good look at it, and not not everything is. Uh, you say good bones, but there's always a lot of work to be done. So um, it's an existing two-family house. We're we're maintaining it as a two-family house, but um, there are three houses um, adjacent to each other that are very similar. If you've been to the site there, you you see it. So there are, there are like three sisters uh, with very similar detailing and in various um, degrees of um, repair. Um, but they all have kind of the same uh, window. I just noticed that the two windows here on the top don't have the little uh, Romeo and Juliet balcony that, that their uh, house has up there on the, on the top there. But um, all in all, very similar houses. And the reason they're able to create this addition, and by the way, there's no variance required for the 10-foot addition that they're proposing um, in terms of uh, setback, um, uh, is that the houses, there's a lot of space between the neighboring house and theirs. So um, we're going to take some of that space, but there's still quite a bit of space left over can see from the um, from the site plan. So uh, we went through a bunch of different options. The clients told me, you know, they wanted to have a room for uh, two kids on the main floor and have a master bedroom upstairs. Um, I guess there was an apartment up in the top floor originally. Um, very small space, very very bad repair. So as part of the addition to the house, we proposed uh, to carve out this master bedroom, and but to keep ourselves under the 50% requirement for an attic space. So that's what we did. And um, you know, I can hand out while I'm talking. Just a little rendering to get a little better sense of the massing of the house and how we're approaching doing this. So we looked at a few options. Thank you. Um, we looked at removing the roof and putting in a new roof, but as you can see, this, uh, you know, we're already challenged with height. We're already up at 35 feet, so um, taking off that roof and trying to create a different kind of roof uh, just didn't seem uh, like a, a good aesthetic choice. Oh, sorry. sorry. Uh, we considered, now, uh, like I said, there are a lot of issues with the house. We considered removing the house uh, entirely, starting from scratch. Um, and then we also looked at some other ideas, um, but what we came to was a decision. Uh, at that point, um, there was work needed to be done on a garage and back. And so uh, Austin has painstakingly done repairs. You know, there were a lot of leaks. That was kind of like the first need of the house to get this fixed up. So he proceeded to, to work on it to, to fix the structural issues. He proceeded then to uh, you, uh, put, uh, replace the siding uh, with um, hardy plank siding. Um, he's replaced the trim, repaired the trim. Um, now he's, um, oh, he wrecked, he's using uh, tile, uh, excuse me, a slate style tiles on the roof now. And now he's painstakingly recreating the look of the windows in the house. So when it came to uh, how to just make this addition work with the existing house and considering the integrity of their house and the adjacent houses, we didn't want to compete with our addition with what was already there. So the idea was to come up with some form that would blend in but kind of sit back, if you will, and not 
try to compete, not try to fake a detail or pretend that we are living in 1904 and build as they did then, because we're not gonna, you know, we're not gonna be able to do that. That just, that's just not how we see it. So we're, but we, in terms of massing, said let's let's do something that <coughs> kind of reflects that idea of that time period. So we came up with the idea of just having a very quiet, subdued um, roof line that would kind of recall an era, but not really try to re repeat anything. Um, so that's what we did. And uh, I set the front of the addition back from the front fa facade of the existing house. Um, yeah. I just have to go to explain the simple fact that that's where the front stair was. So there was a combined entrance originally here on the first floor with a, with a stair going up really out of code, very, very steep stair. Hey. And this door going into the first floor unit. Um, so we decided to separate that and do two Those were things. Existing. It's the new. Uh, create a separate front entrance, and then, by the way, in conjunction with that, have separate rear entrances, just for safety's sake. Um, and by the way, this this back entrance already has a roof, and already has a foundation. I don't know why they didn't just fill it in in the first place with a stair, but they had an outside stair. So we're filling it in. Um, that's all. So this front stair foyer for the second floor unit, you know, it's open, it's airy. We're just trying to give a little elbow room, a little space, uh, a little sense of, uh, you, you know, you're coming into a good nice space. Um, so that's, but this was set back a couple feet and a Unfortunately, as I structurally, I was forced to kind of push it back forward again, um, just dealing with the way we're tying into the existing house and where the uh, where the basement supports are and where we can tie in. So I, I had to pull it back. We set back a foot down to the front. Um, I'd like to push it back further, but that's where we are right now. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so we'll have questions now from the commissioners, Mr. Reynolds. Questions. Questions. I don't have any questions. Okay. Mr. Friedman. I'd like to formulate a question. I'm struggling. I, I'm really at a loss to understand this application. So I'll hopefully other people's questions will help clarify it for me. I, mean, I, don't, I don't have any questions. Um, I was just wondering how many st staircases so what you're proposing is filling in the back here with all the where all these staircases are now is that it yeah. it's not clear no, no, no. I don't Take quite get it, it. Yeah. can someone help me right now there's an, a whole set of exterior decking and Those stairs that projects away. far back off the rear corner of the building Got we're going to remove that and create an interior stair squared off within the existing footprint That's in the of the rear of the property. Coming into the building, right. Right now it's open at that corner of the property. Right. So it'll be walling off the side and that's what triggers the variance because they're going to put a wall to close in the stairway at the cor rear corner of the building. Right now that rear corner is kind of notched in and the stair comes out right. through that section. So we're not going wider on back. the side of the it's building. It's not going any wider. It's in line with the building. They're just wider so here and walling it getting in. filled in. Oh, it is going wider. Yes. This and side is getting wider here. It shows existing here side. and new addition the other side so if you're talking about the, the rear stair first floor right. this I, is I all just new. asked about the rear new. stair right that that's what i was clarifying. Is the existing and then this is getting filled in here so they have this existing stair this is going to get filled so in these two are the these are the two issues so this uh, okay. this this is the existing building yep. correct and you're proposing an addition to the east Correct. Which is one. where the driveway is now. Mm -hmm. Correct. And then you're going to move yes. the driveway. Yeah. The driveway will remain, but go it's for it. It's going to move over. It'll yeah, move over. over. Do you have the site? Yeah. But it's, 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 it's yes. right. very wide. So right. this is the new driveway now. It is. Right. 
And then, but where, so you're proposing to come off the back with the building where all these staircases are, correct? Well, here, here on the site plan, this is just getting no. filled in. These go away. Yeah, the site plans are present. So this is notched yeah. right there. This, is oh, okay. this just gets filled in. Okay. It's just a little, it's frank, it's a six by ten area that's notched out of the back of the building. Mm -hmm. Great. So you, you call that the, you have a new deck. Yeah, see, the, there's a notch. It's under the roof, but it's open. That's going to get filled. So you're putting in. a new stairway. A, you're eliminating really a, a back technical stairway. variance because uh -huh. the set, the, the, the construction is already there. They're just putting a wall up to make it an interior instead of exterior. Setback. And the variance is the is on the rear yard setback. It's on the side. It's yard on the setback. side the yard. And what is the oh, amount? Of it, wait, I'll read the existing it again. building is only set back 1.2 feet, I believe, along the side yard. The requirement yeah. is six feet. Yeah. But from I mean, the property just, line. So even yeah. though the roof is here, technically they're exacerbating that set back by extending by building, the building a solid farther, wall. but it's not really being extended because the roof is there. They're just putting a wall to fill it in. This is really a technical variance. It's mm -hmm. not. See here? In fact, on yeah, the first floor, rear photos. it's actually built out to the corner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. But it's a closet. Right. And on the second floor, there's a sort of a deck that becomes this strange contraption here that also leads onto the roof which doesn't have any kind of thing. So, so what you're adding, what you're just filling in, what? Within show, the show me exactly what you're filling in there. Yeah, right here with under the... Under that little the notch, notch, that's what you're yeah, filling look, in? Look at yes. that plan right here. Right. That's getting yeah, I see that. That little yeah. bit on the second floor yeah. only. So it's now a solid notice. That's going to go down to the first floor. Or down to the second right. floor. Mm -hmm. All the way down. Mm -hmm. Then could you describe what this railing is on the top here? Yeah, we're, we're putting a deck up on the corner there. Oh, on the... Th on the roof. On, on the, the roof. roof. Yeah, an oh actual roof. deck. Right. Oh, oh, I You pause. If the lawyer gets it, you don't... <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then this is the third floor master right. suite. Right, Three right. deck right there. Right here. And, but you're at... Okay, and you're adding to the... This side of the building, you're adding a ten, ten feet. feet. Ten feet. Can you still room for a driveway? And with yeah. within very without within code. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's the what's the the side yard setbacks in the zone? Six and ten. Six. Six from one side and ten from the other. Yep. Interesting. They're not. It's not the same on both sides. No. No. Are most districts no. the same on both sides? Actually, every district has two different. Okay, so so what we're looking at the um, the existing setback for the front yard set setback is 21 feet. That's not changing. That's not right. changing. That's the staying the same. Porch, right. uh, the applicants requesting a variance in the maximum permitted number of stories. You're proposing three stories, or a maximum of two and a half stories. Yeah, I'm not calling it three stories, but. I guess that's where we're having technically in our our technically staff determination is that the portion of the building in the mansard roof is a third story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But okay. I'm under the fifty percent of the total area at the top floor. What just what is the ruling? What is the determinant of whether it becomes a two and a half or a three story? Fifty percent of of the facade wall below. So it's just that portion. So the the facade, mm -hmm. the front facing. No, of the of it would be of that that eastern facade wall. So, but he's saying it's less than 50%. Yeah, I guess it's it's a question. It's, this is why the zoning board is here in Tepkage, to help in this process. <laughs> right. <laughs> they are and the great the designers. Here we are. <laughs> and, then so, and then the required variance, uh, the minimum si is, right, six feet. So what the variances seem to be, as you said, technical. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so what well, the addition is triggering two variances. It's it's triggering the the front yard setback variance, which is 21 feet. It's aligning aligning the extension of the porch with the existing porch. Well, it's not it's not the house, it's not the addition of the house. It's, it's a just porch. just the porch. Yeah, right. It's a covered porch, which is part so of the. So all the porches structure. on the street, you know, they all line up. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll be bringing that information. Yep. Yeah, and that's that's beneficial the to the board. Meeting. And then the the third story. Right. Okay. Which is, so you're saying is a two and a half story. He's saying it's two and a half, and you're saying it's a third story. Correct. Okay. Do you have any questions, Carolyn? Did, did we ask you? <laughs> you yeah, ask yeah, a question? I, I ask a question. And Steve? 
No questions. Okay. Um, so we have the, um, um, the Historic Preservation Consultants Report. Have you received a copy of this? Yes. Okay. And um, so maybe uh, Ms. Hickey can address these now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, the first comment really is just at the ground level there in terms of we've got two, sorry, two primary doors. Really one should be the main entrance and the other one should be the secondary entrance so that mm -hmm. it really shouldn't match. Um, the, the, the mansard roof um, is really awkward in terms of its relationship to the existing gable and um, taking that into consideration with uh, the item number three and you know this is not a design thing but if you look at buildings of this era um, when they're sort of an asymmetrical uh, facade um, in terms of the the right side is sort of, sort of wider than than the left uh, there's usually some sort of point of detail um, creating that verticality that you want to be able to balance the, the wider right side to the narrower left side um, and, and th in this in this regard so uh, however you do it we yeah, just the suggestion was a, a tower of some sort if you look at if you look at historical precedent um, and then um, what do you mean by tower just yeah. so we understand so like a turret or um, there's many ways to like slice like and dice like it. A, a round doesn't doesn't have to be round it could be square there's there's all kinds of examples so out there that would be taller than no, it doesn't necessarily need to be taller. It just needs to kind of balance the the heavy uh, gable roof. Um, so it, the mansard roof, you feel, is aesthetically inconsistent with yeah. the style of the building. Yeah. Okay. And, and it's not. It's it may, maybe it can work. Like may, maybe you carry one of the windows over to the mansard and figure out. How way to do it but there there's a there's a void up at that next to that gable that's that's really that's really keeping the 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 building out of balance even though it's a asymmetrical um, yeah, look at the window to the left on the extension on the second floor do you have any issues with that um, I there was a lot of issues I think he just <laughs> did the highlights okay um, so uh, and then also the, the use of materials. I, I'm not sure how detailed you were with regard to uh, the materials and all the windows should have a historical sill, which it, they may or may not. It's, it's difficult to tell from the drawings. You're talking about like a drip edge kind of sill? No, you mean an actual sill and then the trim around it, not a, not a picture window mm -hmm. detail. Right, right. So I mean, in terms of comment number three, there there are many different ways to approach this. Is just right now, it's being a asymmetrical, but an asymmetrical building doesn't necessarily need to be out of balance. It's right, it's dynamic symmetry. Yeah. Okay. So um, comments then. Um, on the front facade. Well, I agree with the whole comment about the mansard roof. And there's a lot of different ways to slice and dice that roof up there. I can imagine the gable facing the street, a smaller gable facing the street, and then working, you know, as a slight setback. So that at least there's, you know, there's a, there's a little bit, and you, you can still get roof height by doing other things with the dormer running through and different things, just so that we're not talking about a mansard roof in a gable house. I don't want you to lose your master bedroom up there and stuff, but I think you can shape it a little bit different at the top. Um, I would get rid of the little square windows. Mm -hmm. I understand that they're there, uh, you know, at the stairs, but I would tend to make them a double hung window <laughs> like, like, like the others. Um, and I would tend to try to do something where uh, to break the massing by yeah. just shifting some of these windows over and maybe making a corner board that runs down through there. I don't know if that's um, 
that, that th those are my comments. So that sign isn't visible to anybody but the neighboring house. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. different, you know. Mm -hmm. It's such a long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had something like this in the last in our last uh, it was Fourth Street, and it was a long extrusion, of, you know, uh, with, with the neighbor, and we spent a lot of time getting them to break down the massing of the facade along yeah. that side. That's the existing house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I got it. So you want me to? You're adding to you that. To you're, you're, you're adding to that. Historically shown to be the situation. Here. Well, you're 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 t you're pointing to the two floors there. You're not. You don't add. You haven't added a whole another level above that. What you're doing. Well, you know that. Yes. Normal. So you're doing something you're standing, completely you're different. Standing. Mm -hmm. Unmatched dormitory. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. That's my Green comment. Thank you, yeah. Mr. Greenbaum. Comments. Comments. Um, I feel uh, very much in agreement with John. Overall, I think the overall uh, takeaway is. I find a lack of coherence to it. I think there needs to be a, a really, you really want to think about, you know, your penetrations and, and the massing and to try to create a unity to it. Um, even though it faces the side, you know, it still affects the neighbors and also it affects the quality of life in the house. And I agree about the mansard roof, there's got to be a better approach. I know you want to get the, the volume of space up there. Um, I think there's better ways to do it. Um, yeah. Maybe using a different, like it was suggested, a different gable with a different, with a ridge line running parallel. Maybe step back. I don't know. You know, I would like to see more coherence to the plan. Mm -hmm. That's it. Also, the sills and, and, and the, um, I'm sorry, I agree with the sills. Mm -hmm. I agree with what was suggested. And uh, I think the windows, uh, and I agree with John too about the windows on the staircase. Um, and also the window, uh, go back to your elevation facing Oxford Street. The windows, the two windows on the second floor. Like, what is that? That's the stairwell. Oh. So the placement's determined by the, the stair. But couldn't it, wouldn't Running. it be nice walking up the stairs to have nice light coming in instead of those two little diminutive windows? Well. These windows also serve as stairwell. Right, but I'm saying facing towards Oxford Street. Yeah. Like the elevation doesn't have it doesn't have any consistency. Look at the two windows. Well again, the the, the, the intent was not to try to match even the this nice facade. I'm not trying to mm. you know, I'm I'm trying to be reserved here and, right. and not Okay. Not fight against it. All right. Well, well that's or, or not try I'm not, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a comment. It's a suggestion. I'm to be quiet recommendation. You know. Yeah, I think there needs to be greater coherence. Okay, Mr. Hunt. Yeah, I, I agree with uh, the, the comments in the uh, consultant's report as well as uh, Mr. Ryman's comments. Um, I will say that uh, um, I do support the variance application um, and the overall scheme of the project, but. I I just think some of these details need to be worked out. And I agree with my colleague. Um, I'm just looking at the picture that the barn in the back has such a nice gable that if, if uh, that was replicated on this side, which I, you might be able to get that sort of, you know, idea with, the, with that. It's just an idea. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that, um, we, you know, especially taking that staircase off the back, will be a vast improvement mm -hmm. um, but I do think that the barn in the back is so um, evocative that that oh, yeah. it would be something that would be you know when you drive down the street you'll still still be able to see it with, with your addition mm -hmm. um, I also agree mm -hmm. that I think with the our consultants comments the the front door to the the new uh, to the second floor on the left reads needs to be made subordinate and um, um, to the first floor, to the fr front door, to the true front door. Um, I do see that you're proposing hardy board for the the entire house. Yes. So you're going to take off this um, yellow um, vinyl, which is great. Uh, aluminum. 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 Okay, aluminum. 
And you've got this little cute little shed detail over this window here. Um, yes. Which is probably original to the house. If you could, you know, think about that. Yeah, they all have. They all have. Yeah, well, think about that maybe, you know, to bring that back. <coughs> not bring it back, but to consider it for something down on the second floor. Oh. Yeah, because it, do, it does have that gable effect, which is echoed, you know, in the different gables uh, of the house. It's, it's just an idea. It, it but I think it'll be, it, it'll be a vast improvement. Um, and I hope that you'll, you are keeping the balcony and the, the windows up here. Are those are those leaded windows or are they wood? Uh, um, wood. Oh, they're wood. But it's a very unique Yeah, but uh, it. Yeah, you're going to keep the the original. You should these should be kept. Because yeah. that those would make it. Un, I didn't quite notice what is next door to it, but um, that with that little balcony will be. Are those the other buildings? Mm -hmm. The neighboring yeah. buildings? Yeah. I want to see that for a second. Yeah. Oh, see, you've got that. See, you've got this win these this window in the in those buildings as well. Yes. And they're crisscrossed. So. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. nice. It's a nice. It's a nice detail that would be great. You call them sisters, three three, three sisters. sisters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, which is a sweet idea. I would I would try to to play on that. I, Carolyn, I know you're about to go next. May I just make one question? The clapboard that you're doing, the Hardy board. Um, I know, are the other buildings, uh, the two sister buildings, are they aluminum also? No, probably I would say that you probably want to do a wider plank. Try to, maybe if there's a way you can get uh, pictures of the building as it was originally built at the Montclair Public Library. But I would be very cautious not to do this very narrow plank. Yeah, that's what he's using. The yeah, wider or yeah, the, the wider ones? Yeah. Oh, good. Let me see. Well, I think if you peel away the aluminum siding, you'll see what was the original mm -hmm. plank right. underneath. So that's the and first step, is to see yeah. what the siding were, what, yeah. the, what the frames okay. are, what, <laughs> what the yeah. okay. siding is. So, okay. All right, so Thank you. Um, as you mentioned, it's one of three sister houses that are similar. Um, so I think it's really important to maintain that relationship. Mm -hmm. um, I think any addition should be set back to maintain the primacy of the original volume of the house so it can still be read. And um, it would be terrific to for the existing portion of the house to do a really a first class restoration, at least of the front facade. And I would recommend that you go to the library or if Graham do we have the tax photos the original you know early photos of him so that you can see what it looked like and what it could be restored to um, that, that's a good point have you looked in the library uh, vintage photo um, no not yet um, so that's what we're planning to do um, we will probably at least restore all the windows and doors in front but the doors may be not the same but the windows definitely will keep all the styles uh, the monkey. But you start instead of using single pan glass, maybe using, you know, we're, we're probably going to use the double pan insulator, mm -hmm. right. low E, and then just more any energy efficient. And then we kept the mountains outside, uh, not really truly divided. Um, that's, that's okay. The, the okay. just getting back to the, the Montclair Public Library has a tremendous resource that if you bring them the address, there's actually on the second floor on the South Fullerton, um, there's a young lady there who'd be happy to help you find out whatever they can. You, you can do it online too, when you right. find it. So, do you have um, any yeah. more comments? Um, just, I, I agree with um, the consultant's recommendations that the, the door to mm. the second apartment be simplified without the side lights. So, it, it um, and as John, Mr. Remnitz described, maybe a gable instead of a mansard roof. Um, the railings at the porch, I don't know what you're proposing. They look thin here proportionally. Were you proposing wood or metal? Or I think they should be a, a, a wood railing. That's typical, you know, just a s simple square railing that um, would probably show up in the 
historic photographs. So if you could replicate that. Or to match the other building, the other houses, mm -hmm. the sister houses. Yeah. I don't think they've all got their original, though. Oh, OK. Yeah. OK. Uh. I agree with my um, colleagues with the, all of the things. The, the one thing that uh, Mr. Conley wrote in his report was about balancing it and maybe using a tower. And since that is a stair tower, it's gonna, that's all it is, <laughs> maybe you could bring that up and square that off somehow. But it's you got to be delicate about it because you don't want to detract from the sisters. There, there's yeah. another house about five houses down that has a tower. It's a similar house. Right. I don't yeah. know. If it's <laughs> <laughs> You'd take a look at it. All right. But I, but I thought this sketch was very useful too. I don't yeah. know if we can share it. Yeah. Okay. I'll share it with you. So this is goes before the planning board. Um, zoning board. Zoning board on this. Is 18 October. October. This October. Okay. Um, um, so I guess just in reviewing the proposed uh, recommendations, um, again, Mr. Hyman said that the commission will be supportive of the requested variances because it's an improvement. So that would be a preemptive statement. Uh, then uh, from Mr. Connolly's memo, it sounds like comments one, two, and four should we include comment three? That was with respect to the tower. Or, or an alternate would be a gable. Okay. But but oh, the the gable and the roof line should be again subordinate to the original, so it should be a little bit lower than the original. And your point of having it's smaller. The, your it's point, smaller. Caroline, of having the uh, um, I don't know how you're going to do that though. To have the um, ex the um, addition be recessed or set back, but the problem it is it already it, it already more. is recessed. I would set it back a little bit more. Yeah, it is recessed already. Well, I'm ask Carolyn what she meant because maybe I misunderstood. I, I think the best approach here may be to carry the recommendation from Mr. Connolly's report on right. Ten Alexander, which was the exact reference to the design guidelines that additions right, right, should be right, subordinate right. or set yeah. back. We can just incorporate that here mm -hmm. as, the, as another condition. So I'll add that one that's subordinate. Um, and to um, maintain that small gable window on the second floor? Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and, and also Which the one on the third floor. The uh, window right. up there, that, that, that's actually the most interesting architectural detail that I, I, I can identify in the house is that third story central gable kind of there's a interesting little there's something interesting happening there on the third floor in that cable and then I had um, that's the most coherent part of the building do you have any anything uh, yeah no I had more um, modify this proposed staircase windows on the front facade at the new addition the, the small little windows that Mr. Ramon has mentioned uh, wood railings for the proposed porches on the front of the building uh, return to the Commission with a final plan for review and return to the Commission for final finishes and materials for hey, hey, Grant? Um, yes. I'm just thinking marrying those two comments, the one about maintaining that window on the second floor, well that's going to become the door. The door. The door. So right. marry that to the comment about the window uh, on the stairwell, like maybe move that element to the okay. stairwell window. So or we could say maintain uh, the original windows and perhaps reuse of the yeah. See because now you have a door coming out as and, and this yeah, window. No, right here, that's right. going away and becoming the door. Right. So taking that element and moving it right. to the stairwell window. Right. That's, sorry, that's okay. what I meant. Okay. All right, so then. Okay, so I think we're all set then for, yep. for this element. Okay, thank you very much. I'm sorry, can I just ask for one clarification? Uh, Mr. Rendon suggested, and the other others suggested, to have the gable. And are you suggesting that the roof? of my mansard uh, change shape to a gable, a, 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 a pitched Wait. roof? Yeah, get um, well, here's here, a, here's yeah. a, oh, it's a sketch. sketch. Right, so I'm just saying. Just and, and maybe your, uh, then, then maybe your dormers in that have to get larger in order to grab that space, that's all I'm saying. Got it. Now this and so that's a volume. That's a volume behind it. There you go. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I think that I think that would work really well with the other um, yeah, as I said, the, the carriage house. Bedroom and I, I got it. <laughs>
Okay. Okay. Good luck. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Any relation to Jane Montag? Okay. No. David Stop. Okay. There are others, but no. All right. Okay. We're moving on. Um, I guess the last items are the certificates, certificates of appropriate. Right. So those were in the packets. Everyone should have uh, Read reviewed them? them. So my suggestion is just to move them all to the floor. And if anybody has any comments, that's one motion. That's one motion. No, no. I have. I have you one. Do? Okay. Uh, uh, for um, of course, it's not here. Um, the. Uh, Did you have it marked up? Yeah. Oh. Do you have? These are clean. <laughs> Um, here's this one. I can do it. That's a good idea, Jason. The only thing is for um, resolution uh, a certificate uh, 2019-24 Piazza del Sol under the scope of work. Um, number seven is the new medium st steel style rev code door in silver color. We oh. we decide we discuss silver mm -hmm. and the awning will be of an aluminum frame finished with black fabric um, such as umbrella because mm -hmm. we always specify that mm -hmm. and then um, the proposed sign will span the uh, width and the entire height of the upper brick facade and that will be out of um, wood that uh, M E D C O. We d we mm -hmm. discuss this. What is that? Med yeah. uh, right. Exactly. <laughs> so that that those are the only comments okay. that I would add. And they still need to come back with the sign. And they have to come. They have to come back for to the uh, revisions mm -hmm. committee. Yeah, to submit the revised signage plan. That's condition four of you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that is that in here? Yes, it's listed under item eight, number four. Oh yeah. And it's to submit a revised signage plan reflecting all that. Okay. I move so we approve the four, the four um, certificate of from units resolutions right. with your adjustments uh, for uh, 602, 604. Uh, there you go. Okay. Second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Motion to adjourn. Motion, <laughs> motion to adjourn. Second. You have to make the motion first. Oh. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.